What is up, guys? It is the Sports Nerd Bradley Walker, and welcome to the Walker Report, part of In the Zone Sports Talk Radio. Welcome, guys, into Thursday night. Uh, guys, we do apologize. Last week, um, we did record this show on Twitch. Unfortunately, it did not record on Twitch. That's why there was no show to share on YouTube and or other forms of social media. So we do apologize. Uh, we're going to work out the uh, kinks later on with that. Uh, but we are back on Facebook tonight, guys, so don't worry about that. Um, but uh, what's up, brother? What's up, uh, Brian, out there to you as well? Um, but then again, guys, tonight we're going to kind of keep the topics to a minimum. As you can see, I have my Tampa Bay Buccaneer hat on, and tonight the NFL season returns uh, to uh, open up the 2021-22 season. Uh, just thinking back today, guys, uh, kind of on a, on a more sorrow note, uh, my mom's favorite football team is the Buccaneers, and I'm sure she was smiling down uh, from heaven last uh, this past year. Um, 38 10, I like that. Um, last year, um, to see the Bucs win the Super Bowl at home, but to win it all for her. Um, and I'm sure she's down smiling right now, knowing that her team is about ready to kick it off again uh, this season. But, uh, guys, uh, In The Zone, if you want some In The Zone talk radio gear, head over to squadlocker.com, type in In The Zone sports talk radio to present the store to which you can buy your, uh, your gear. The show, guys, is sponsored by CreatingZenSpaces.com. It's the local choice in St. Petersburg, Florida, for house cleaning, organization, decluttering, and pet sitting. It's about finding the peace within you and adding comfort to your life. Remember, guys, Zen Spaces begins with you. Be kind to yourself and one another. Guys, if you want to see this show or my uh, this, this show, I have, again, if you guys did not hear last week, I've taken a hiatus from my Friday show. I'm going to... Uh, work on it, take some time away from it to kind of think about what I want to do with it moving forward. But this show, I'm going to put um, every fiber of my being into it. Uh, we've talked, you know, Lewis is right here. He, he, he knows what I'm talking about. Um, and Adam, we've talked about maybe taking this show to a third hour, starting at 7 p.m. and going to 10. Um, but we, we, we've been talking about something like that, maybe expanding a little bit, trying to get more people involved as far as our audience and stuff like that. So that's something that we've been talking about uh, behind the scenes. So we'll see what happens. But anyway, guys, we do have a YouTube channel, the Sports Nerd Bradley Walker. Do go over there, like the video, share the videos, and, of course, subscribe. That would be awesome as well. All right, guys, let me bring Lewis on right here. How's it going, sir? Good Bradley. Good evening to you as well. Uh, I guess we wait for Adam to, to drop in here. Um, so we are here. We finally arrived at the start of the National Football League season. So we made it. We made it. Yeah, finally made it. Um, like I said, I, I, I have very brief topics, not really a lot of stuff to talk about. You can kind of base everything kind of on uh, the game and stuff like that. Um, but uh, we can talk. Let's talk about the WNBA because I know Adam yeah. is not the NBA basketball fan while we're here. Right. Uh, I was reading an article, and, and you can you can uh, tell me if you agree or disagree with her. Um, I read an article yesterday that Sue Bird um, calls Diana Taurasi the GOAT of the WNBA. Now, do you agree with that, or do you think that Sue is the GOAT herself? I always said Sue, to be honest. Too? Uh, yeah, I, I mean, she's got I, the titles, you know, and I the Olympics agree. to prove it. So, yeah, I mean, it's not a bad argument, you know, don't get me wrong. I mean, I have nothing against Diana Taurasi at all. She's one of my favorite players, to be honest with you. But Bird has, you know, the championships to go with it. So I would think she is the she is the go-to in the WNBA. Kind of like maybe uh, the female LeBron James. Well, maybe I shouldn't have said that. But you, you, you get the point. I no no I I totally you know Lewis I agree with you I would have thought I would have called Sue the the goat and again I love Diana Taurasi I watched Diana when she was at UConn so yes, I know so I've been her for a long time as we both have Diana and I, I, and then, I, of course she had you know um, Rebecca yeah. yes Rebecca Lobo ah. yeah and she's an and she's an ESPN analyst for the WNBA so yes yes 
yeah. So, um, but yeah, I was, I was just really curious about when that, I read that article the other day that Sue calls her, that calls Tyrosi. Well, I get, you know, I guess Lewis, it might, it might come down to the fact that she doesn't want to toot her own horn because there are right. some athletes that say, Hey, I'm the best, I'm the greatest. And then they're like, Oh, well, okay. She's kind of stuck up when she says that. So maybe there was something into that, but I don't know. I don't know. I mean, that's, that's an interesting question. Uh, uh, to, you know, but I, 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 I say, I disagree. I think Sue, I think Sue is the goat. Uh, I really honestly could say I think Sue is the goat in this in this equation, but they're both great players. They're both going to go down as probably two of the greatest players ever to play in the WNBA, uh, along with Lisa Leslie and a lot of those great players yeah, that, brought, awesome. mm-hmm. that brought the brought you know the league to where it is today. Um, I actually caught the last thing I think I caught the end of the. Um, um, the Los Angeles Aces, and I forget who they were playing last night, but I caught the end. Craig the, Sun? That's it. That's who, yeah, No, they were playing Minnesota. Minnesota yeah, Lynx. Minnesota Lynx. And I guess the Lynx are now in fifth, and the Aces are two. Mm. And it gets number one, I think, overall in the uh, – yeah. uh, I think number I think one – right Yeah. Number one, I think Connecticut is number one, and then you have uh, Vegas at two. Yeah. And then the the links are at five, and then I think it's the storm at three. So they're like, I think they where they have like a week left of their regular season or two weeks. Just about, left. yeah, just about their regular season for the playoff start. All right. Well, how you doing tonight, there, sir? I'm all right. How are you, gentlemen? Doing all good. right. Doing good. All right. So we got that. We'll talk about the WNBA. Um, the, I do have guys. I do have a, a tennis thing, but it's about. Again, this is all going to be like short-lived stuff. Not going to really yeah, yeah. much detail. Yeah. Uh, Naomi Osaka is thinking about taking another lengthy mm-hmm. break away from tennis after her loss in the U.S. Open. Is that a wise thing to do? Is it a mental thing with her? I I, I don't I don't know. It's I mental. mental. It sounds like a sore loser kind of thing to me. Mm. Yeah, I'm just saying. I mean, you know, if every time you lose, you're just gonna you walk away that. from it. Sounds like you're, sounds like you're a sore loser. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, you I know, mean, you know, if, if you can't mentally handle losing, that's on you. That's not anybody else. You you need to go and get go to a sports psychologist and get therapy. To make yourself be able to deal with the, you know, the ups and the, you know, if you can't handle, if you can't handle it, um, you know, you got to admit that to your. The first step to, to to getting better is to admit that to yourself. Yes. And if that, because every time it seems like every time that she gets beat, whether it's you know whether she gets her asses handed to her or she loses by one, you know, one point, it seems like she's throwing a fit. Yeah. And. You know, and I'm not in her head. I don't know what's going on in her head, but from the outside looking in, to me, it, it says that you're a sore loser. That you you can't handle the pressure of winning and losing. Look, I get it. You know, we talked about that before. Losing sucks, and it, it's really sucky it when you when you lose, and some reporter comes and sticks a camera in your face and a mic and says, "Oh, how do you feel about that loss?" I'm like, well, not particularly well. But, you know, if you can't handle that, then you need, you know, you got to figure it out. Yeah. You know, because if you're just going to keep, if you're just going to, you know, and, and the one thing about tennis, I will say, is it, it's not a team sport. No. So it's not like she's bailing on her teammates. So I, I'll give her that, you know, I, I'll give her that, that it is a, it's an individual competition. So she, at least she's not, you know, she's not stepping away from it and putting, you know, how many ever, you know, you know, 20, 30, 40 people, you know, 50 people that depend on, you know, her being there day in and day out mm-hmm. on the outs. So, you know, I'll give her that. But those are my thoughts. Okay. No, I, that's, I mean, that's, yeah. I, I, again, I saw the article. Also, too, guys, I wanted to let you know that I subscribed to The Athletic earlier. Sweet. This week. So a lot of things in the future might be coming from there. Oh, just hey, that works. You no. Know? Uh, All right, cool. I'm trying so, to get my. 
I mean, it was only twelve ninety nine for the year. So that's not what oh, that's happened. not bad at all. Oh, not bad. What the hell? I mean, now it's good until next September. Then it goes up to like seventy two dollars. So we'll see where I'm at next year at this time. But right. Uh, right now, can... I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead. I I in the beginning started to follow team certain teams. So I'm kind of wondering. Yeah. As we now get into the yeah. NFL season, hockey season is a, literally a month away. Or the, I think they start preseason games in the middle of this month. So yeah, um, yeah, hockey will be back here before next we week. Know it. Next week, okay. Hockey will be, be back before we know it. Um, so yeah, I'll be and football's back. already back today, so it's kind of worth it right now. I was going to say it's uh, about three weeks. The, uh, Speaking of that, I, uh, I I I watched some of the Michigan game on Saturday. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we talked about that. Our ball did a good job. Um, Looks good. Um, I, give me I one have... sec. I'm up. A... Okay, go ahead. I'm going to bounce out and bounce right back in. All right. Uh-oh. Lewis, I was going to ask you, what, what was your favorite game from the weekend, from uh, the college football weekend? Which, which you game? might find this. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to say, um, well, it was actually two that were great games. It was Notre Dame and that team from Florida. Florida State? No, that's okay. You can say Florida State. Okay. I'll, I, I, I don't want to offend anybody. Okay, Notre Dame Florida State, which went to overtime, and then the surprise game of the week, which I think um, many of you seem to forgot about, or don't think it was a surprise. Oklahoma barely being Tulane. Tulane gave him a hell of a ball game. Yes, yeah. they did. Yes, I forgot. I'm thinking, you know, I I'm thinking, you know the cream puff team. They weren't going to stand a chance. Boy, do I feel stupid now. I'm sure a lot of us do. I like the surprise. The surprise of the week. My game was Penn State, Wisconsin. That was a great football game. Great game, great game. Penn State, the Wisconsin, Wisconsin. Wisconsin too. Yep. The surprise of the week actually happened in the Pac-12. Oh yeah, Colorado losing, right? Right. Washington losing to Washington. Montana. It's Montana. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. I, I listened to the last minute, ninety seconds of that game, as I decided to sign up for um, Tune In Radio. It's like seven bucks a month. Yep, and I listen to all the uh, all the college games. So games that I can't get, I don't get Pac-12 Network, so I couldn't watch it. You too. Uh. Yeah, and it's not it's not a re it's not available. Even though I pay for the second most expensive package, I still can't get Pac-12 Network. I can't get Pac-12 uh, either, dumbass. No, so I probably have to upgrade to the next, you know, the highest tier. And I don't even know if I would get it then. So, well, you can get off and, streaming services though. Maybe. But I just have I just have tune in, so I listen to the last ninety seconds of it. Man, there's pins and needles. Just listening to the Montana broadcast was a hell of a finish. Yeah, and for uh, yeah, and for Washington, it was hell. Well, Washington plays Michigan. Yeah, it was. I'm scared of this weekend. Uh, yeah, tough I'm game. really worried about that because you know, should be it should be, especially you know coming off a bad loss against the you know. Uh, Subdivision team, you know, you're not going to want to get embarrassed twice, and you got to cra- travel across the country, come to a hostile and you know, the most hostile environments to play in. Uh, yeah, on prime time, you right. better put your work pants on, boys, because it's going to be it's going to be a long night. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, um, if you I don't, think you're, I'm going to go on record and say this right now. I know we're watching the game at Raymond James Stadium and. I'll be there on Saturday, and I really, honestly believe it's going to be an absolute massacre. I hate to agree with you on well, that. Well, I, I have to. That. Oh, they're going to get stomped. They're just going to. ESPN gives them less than a five percent chance of winning that football game. That's. I'm surprised it was that high. Five percent, huh? Yeah. Or I think four point five percent chance of USF beating Florida this weekend. Well, going I, I would have put it at like one percent, man. Now really? I'm excited because really? again I get to go back. Well, you get to be there in person, and that's to be you know. There in person, and I don't have to pay for a ticket, and they feed me for free, and you know. Right. Stuff. Um, I got you in on this deal. And I also, know, right? too, also, too, I have a buddy of mine who I met here on Facebook, mm. a huge Florida Gator fan, and I've never met him in person. I've talked to him like we're talking here, or talked to him on Facebook, and I'm gonna meet him in person for the first time, and he's really excited. He's like. I can't wait to meet you. I got all these people I want to introduce you to. And I'm like, all right, well, oh, yeah. I'm going to be here sure. at this time. And, you know, I'm not going to have too much time because I want to try to get on the field if I have field access. I don't want to, you know, miss right. that. Yeah. Of course. So, but, um, 
Yeah, I, I mean, we can, we can, guys, we can look real quick at the. We all, we have. Uh, we about five. Washington, we can look at all the, the, the. Um, run through the top twenty-five real quick. Yeah, run through the. Yeah, top why not? 25. I'm pleased. Alabama's gonna stomp. Oh, God, Alabama. Yeah. They just turn it over. They just turn over the roster, and they still look like world beaters. They do. Yeah, they. Well, the funny thing is, after after Florida plays USF, that's who they open up their SEC. Right. Uh -huh. And I think the Gators are going to get killed. I, 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 yeah, I have a terrible feeling. Not about killed, but I, I thought Miami was going to give Florida a better ball game. So did I. I, I thought I didn't think they would win, but I thought they'd 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 play close. Well, wait, what exactly what we said couldn't happen happened. What yeah. we talked about for three months, yeah. When they first announced the schedule, you know they can't go down and they can't go. The game was where where was that game? Dallas yeah. was that was yeah Atlanta. Was it no? Was it in Atlanta? Atlanta. It's was Atlanta. it in Atlanta? Because I know the the Monday night game was in Atlanta. Or no, the Sunday night game. I don't. know. No, it's Monday night. Ole Miss played there too. They put they got okay. one out and because that's Lane Kiffin didn't make the trip, right? Right, and they still stomped Louisville. Yeah, yeah it's not, not a good game. Um, but here's the top twenty-five. I guess it starts, guys, on uh, tomorrow night. Coastal Carolina is number seventeen in the country. They're playing Kansas. Kansas won their first game in how many tries? I think last weekend. So that was interesting. Since twenty nineteen. Twenty nineteen. Like November twenty eighth, November fifteenth of twenty nineteen was the last. No. What um, what is most interesting, guys? And I I don't I'm I'm hoping that I'm going to get a chance to watch game day before I get to the stadium on Saturday. But we all you know we all know what what Saturday is. It's the twentieth anniversary of nine eleven. Yeah. 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 There's going to be a lot of. I'm guessing there's going to be a ton of like fireworks and military mm -hmm. celebrations all over the country. Uh, I think on Sunday too. I wouldn't be surprised in the NFL if they don't do the same thing. Yeah, uh, um, likely. Yeah, the New York Fire Department is playing the New York um, Department. Police Department, uh, probably at the Garden. I would imagine it's at the Garden. Oh sure. And a uh, friendly hockey match. Yeah. On, the, the on ESPN. Playing, Mets are playing the Yankees this weekend too. Saturday so. night. Yeah. 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 So it was the first game in New York since after the attacks. Right. And, and on, you know, it was – I remember it like it was yesterday. I saw it too. Um, I was a lot younger then. The, the um, first <laughs> game is, the, is Oregon against Ohio State. Hmm. It's a noon game on Saturday. That's or the Ducks? the Ducks? Yep. Whack, whack, whack. Whack, whack. Whack, whack. Yeah. Where? Uh, they're in. They're in Columbus. Is it in Columbus? They're yeah. In Columbus. Forget it. That's a that's a runaway for Ohio State. <sighs> yeah. Guys. Unfortunately. Okay. Yeah. Unfortunately, West Coast teams don't travel to the East Coast well. No. Um. The next one, guys, is Alabama. Especially at a noon kickoff. That's a that's a rough start yeah. for. Because that's actually that'd be like an, a a nine a.m. casting yeah. call for for the Ducks. Hawaii, it'd be seven a.m. or six a.m. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, that that's going to be a tough road to hoe. The uh, next game is Alabama State against number twenty-five Auburn, and that's in Auburn. So that's where Auburn. wait. Alabama's playing Auburn. What, what? Alabama State is playing. Auburn. Oh, okay. Auburn. Sorry, I misunderstood. No, that's okay. So what the hell? The, the Iron Bowl isn't until the end of the year, right? Uh, uh, the Iron Bowl closes out, man. Yeah. Then of course the game I'll be at is Florida at, at USF at one o'clock at yeah. Raymond James Stadium. Um, right. Did now, you ever find out why they pushed that game back an hour? Um, I yeah. think because it's on ABC, but and I think they pushed it back for more viewership. I believe because okay. it was supposed to. You were right; it was supposed to be a new well new kickoff. I think the thing is that you know a lot of stations thinking here I was going to come on nine eleven coverage too. So, oh yeah, yeah. So I think is for that sake alone, which I'm not surprised at. I mean, right? Coverage three goes to one o'clock anyway, so it's it's really not surprising me by that by any means. So I think yeah, no, on there. No, that's fair. That's fair too. I just was wondering if you had, you know, being an insider, if you had heard any any juicy tidbits about I that. I know, I know that the, the Gators, the Gators are usually their helmet is going to be all white, and the logo, the Gators spell that will be in red, white, and blue. That's cool. That's, that's awesome. 
So they're doing that. I'm sure USF will do the same thing with their crumb. something special. Something special for that. Sure. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if USF doesn't come out in all black, to be honest. That would be interesting. interesting to come out in all black uniforms. Um, but then the next game, guys, is, is Va Tech versus Middle Tennessee. Oh, it's easy. Then you have Notre yeah. Dame Toledo following that. Notre Dame. Yeah. You have Georgia and UAB. Georgia, I, I, Georgia surprised the hell out of me over the weekend. Georgia's going to run it up against UAB. I wasn't surprised. That game could have went either way. Either team could have won that. I was so. surprised at how bad, how inept Clemson's off, anemic Clemson's offense was. Yeah. Mm, okay. That was that was surprising to me. Um, I just they never could get they could never find their footing, and then Georgia's defense just teed off and went to town on on that Clemson offensive line. Yeah. Well, they got Michelle Williams singing the national anthem. That's cool. Mm. Oh, is that right? Um, yeah. they have and it's Texas A and M against Colorado, three thirty. Uh, it's a three thirty game. That should be an interesting game. A and M's a yeah. good, good, good solid team. Good game. Um, then you have number seven Cincinnati at home against Murray State. That should be easy for the Bearcats. Uh, for that one, uh, you know it's amazing though how Cincinnati the Bearcats do well, but the Bengals, who are also today, suck. Yeah. Well, am I the only one thinks that? Am I the only one feels that way? Because they have no <laughs> offensive line and they just hung their back out to dry. So there you go. <laughs> yeah. Um, then you have at uh, Penn State at home in Happy Valley against Ball State. Uh, that's Penn State. Right. Kick off. Alabama's got balls. Mercer at four o'clock. Mm. Yeah. That's a... Now here's Ooh, the game guys, I wanted to get your opinion about. Iowa and Iowa State, number nine versus mm-hmm. number ten in Ames. So this is this is the Cyclones' home stadium. This game, Iowa, right, I think is. I want to run away. I don't know, but I want to run away. I want to run away. No. I yes, absolutely. I want to run away. It's going to be ugly from the fir- from the kickoff. If you go back and you watch, I Iowa absolutely put the screws to Indiana. They just turned them thumb screws all the way down. Last Saturday, and uh, Iowa State struggled with. So I think they played Mercer or somebody like that. They yeah. they and they only won by like they it was sixteen to to seven or something like that. Let me look mm-hmm. it up real quick. Sixteen to nine. Sixteen ten against game Northern game. Iowa. That looks like to be a very uh, tough, yeah a very highly contested game. I wouldn't think this is gonna be a runaway at all. Do you think, Bud, that maybe they were looking ahead till this week and think, okay, we'll just get past from Iowa and look at Iowa? Maybe. That's 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 dan- that's dangerous because if you're overlook, you know, I don't know. I, I just mm, let me look at the stat line real quick. Um, let me give me some insight here. Okay. Uh, yeah, Purdy didn't have any touchdowns. Hall had one touchdown. Looks like you got some. Purdy went twenty-one to twenty-six for one hundred ninety-nine yards. Is that what it says? But no touchdowns. But no touchdowns. And they had to get two turnovers from their defense to get another. And looks like they got a defensive touchdown. Are they allowed to kick a whole lot of field goals? Um, yeah, they kicked three three field goals would do it. Let me look at that real quick. Mm-hmm. Then the yeah. five o'clock. Game, yeah. Clemson and South Carolina State. Um, I saw South Carolina State a few years ago. They played USF here in Tampa. Mm. Um, Oklahoma is at home against Western Carolina at seven o'clock. The uh, another good game at seven o'clock has number fifteen Texas on the road against Arkansas. Yes, mm. interesting. That would be a good football game. That would be an interesting game. Well, the line, the line in that game is uh, Texas is only up uh, favored by seven, and mm-hmm. the over under is fifty six and a half. That's a good, it's a good game to look at as far as betting. For a Let's go. <laughs> I'll take the. I'll take Texas straight up. I'm yeah, not going to take. The, I'm not going to take. I'll, th- I'll take Arkansas to cover, and I'll take the under. Yeah, there. Okay. Do what I. All right. Then you have number eighteen Wisconsin at home against Eastern Michigan. That should be a runaway for Wisconsin. Yeah. 
I have number 22, Miami. The language Appalachian State. That's going to be a tough ball game. Don't knock App State. They're pretty tough. No, I was just about to say that. Don't knock them at all because, it, it, yeah, that game will probably be a lot closer than a lot of people think it's going to yeah. be. Yeah. They're not yeah. a joke anymore. No, they're not. Well, they're Chase Bryce, their quarterback, went 20 of 27 for 259 yards and two touchdowns. Hell, yeah, that's pretty good for Appalachian State. I mean, yep. that's good. Um, the next one is number 20, Ole Miss, against home against Austin P. Um then you have the Tar Heels. Those guys have the P anyway. P, yeah. Um, you yeah, have yeah, North, yeah, yeah, yeah. North Carolina at home against Georgia State. Uh, mm-hmm. North Carolina, of course, got beat in. I don't know. Yeah, that was a disappointing loss. Um, the 10 15 game, guys, is number 21 Utah on the road against BYU. I think that game. Ooh, that's going to be a hot ball gonna game. That's going to be a tough game. I'm going to take BYU. I'm going to take the Cougars, yeah. That's the USF plays them on the road in a couple weeks. Boys BYU mm. on the road before they start their conference play. Um, then you at ten thirty you have Stanford USC. Yeah, that's the Trojans. And they're number fourteen in the country. Yeah, yeah, Trojans all the way. Ranch up there. It's a t- that's a toss. No, the, oh. the Stanford's a bad football team. Okay. I was watching. I watched them last week. I forget who they played, but they 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 got they got pretty well handled. I forget who they played. Um, and then the last game, guys, it looks like it's number 23, Arizona State, home against UNLV and Tempe. That's a basketball school. Got to go with ASU. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> what, what does UNLV know about football? Nothing. Take the basketball. Well, that's the whole thing. Like, Wichita State, who's a great basketball school, they joined yeah. the AAC, but they don't have a football team. It's yeah, Stanford got – can. K, K State beat Stanford twenty four to seven last week. Mm-hmm. Who's the head then, coach? Is it still the same guy, or did they get where the head coach? Where it's Stanford. Uh, I think they. I don't know who's the head coach at Stanford right now. But we have meaningful. Oh, and what just happened? missed him. Just missed. Uh, Is that Evans? Godwin. Whoops. On third and two, they David took a money Shaw. shot, man. David Shaw. Two in the game. Two in the game to do that. Yeah, I don't like that play call. No, not now. It was only fourth and two. He was open, open, though. There. He was open, though. Brady overthrew him a little bit. Yeah, but still, I mean, too early into the kind of a risky game. Fourth and two, first, first series of the game. Get out of here. Oh, good punt. Nice punt. Did that go? I don't know. Anybody catch that joke I did about Austin P? Hangs that up there. Nice. I did not catch the joke. Well, I didn't repeat it. <laughs> Austin, yeah, I heard the, it. Why does all that have to pee? Mm. Oh, yuck. Thank you, folks. <laughs> He'll be here all week. Yes. Well, tell time. Don't forget. Tell time. Don't, for, don't forget to tip your waitress. Don't forget yes. to tip your waitress. That is correct. And your cab driver, too. And your cab driver. Yes. My ball hangs the left and is out at the three. Got them way down in their zone. Right? Okay, this is going to be interesting. All right. On the um, first but real quick, I saw something about NASCAR. This is this is from the Athletic, by the way, too. Right. Um, that they're gonna they're close to nailing down a deal. Wow, it's wide open. Cooper. Oh. So my Marty buddy has Kerr. he has Tom Brady, uh, Mike Evans, and he's got um, what's his name? Um, I don't know if anybody going to know. Lamb on his fantasy team. Nice. Uh, um, okay. Means we had tough road to hoe against him. It says oh, yeah. uh, NASCAR close to moving the Clash exhibition to Los Angeles. Hmm. Did you hear anything about that? Uh, I didn't. I did. I did. They're talking about. Uh, yeah, they're kicking around, around the idea. Schedule. And they're kicking around the idea of moving the um, the opening race to Los Angeles inside the Coliseum, running inside co- the Coliseum. Mm. Uh, they did that one time years and years, like back in the fifties. They ran a race inside the Coliseum, but that was back in the day when you're running Hornet, the the you yeah. know those old Studebakers and you know some of those compact those short cars. I don't know if you could do it. I don't know what kind of I don't know I don't don't know if you could do that with a modern stock car. But again, you only have 20, 20 18 to twenty cars 
in the all in that in the in the uh, in the clash. Right. So I mean, where's it now, though? You the forever it was at the Daytona on the high banks. Uh -huh. Last this year they ran it at the, um, at the road course, and th next year they're kicking around the idea of running it at at uh inside the uh, the Coliseum. Hooray for Hollywood! Mm. Oh, they stopped them. Oh, maybe they didn't stop. Them. Go for it. From the forty. He got it. He got it. They got it's it. Yeah, he did. Yard. Go for it, you coward. He, he got it on the second effort. He got it on the second effort. Yeah. So it, I, it, from the forty, from your they, own. If they do move the first race out of Daytona, where would Daytona then fall on the schedule? No, that wouldn't be. That would just be. An, it's an exhibition race. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Okay. It's just that they're kicking around the idea of running that ex the exhibition race that they traditionally run at Daytona. They're mm -hmm. kicking the idea of running it, kicking around the idea of running it inside the Coliseum in, um, in LA. In LA, and then yeah, the only problem with doing that is that if you're gonna run that, and then you gotta get turned around on Monday or or Sunday, and they yeah. run it on Saturday night, or even Saturday afternoon, you gotta get turned around and hustle back down to Daytona, because you're gonna have to have a team so. In December, you know, you have all your off-season stuff. And you're planning for Daytona. And you've got a 500, biggest race of the year, right? you got all your, you know, getting all the guys together. you got a month and a half to build a car, test a car, get a car ready for Daytona. And then, you, and, and Daytona is a, is a totally a beast onto its own. It's not like any other track you run on. It, it, it's similar to Talladega, but it's, 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 a, it's, it's, a, it's an animal of its own right. So then you got to prepare two cars. For you know, normally you pair pair two cars for Daytona. You have your primary car and you have your clash car. And then this year they had two different cars for Daytona. You had your right. your clash car, which was a road which had to be set up for road courses. But it's not that hard. You know, it's not that different. If you wreck that car, no big deal, no harm, no foul, whatever, move on. But this year, you know, if they move it to California, you gotta get everybody to California the week before the 500, even if it's on Saturday, even if they run it on Saturday afternoon, like if they have it at one o'clock on Saturday afternoon or four o'clock in the afternoon on Saturday, you got to hustle everybody back down to Daytona, get them. And, and by, on Monday morning, you got to get your 500 car ready. It, it, Cause usually qualifying is after the, it's the day after the, um, the clash or is in the afternoon before the clash. And, um, so, did he drop that? Was that a catch? No. Okay, I couldn't tell. I didn't think so. So then you got to hustle back down to Daytona. You get your driver back there. You got to get your team. You got to get all the team, all the crew members back to Daytona. Get the car set up and, and ready to run the qualifying qualifying next or the next day because you got to go. Then you got to you got to turn around on Monday and get the car set up for oh. the twins on Thursday. Then you have practice on Friday, practice on Saturday, and the race on Sunday, assuming that they will have some practice. Uh, Bob Pachris was talking a couple weeks ago on Twitter, or I think it was Twitter, and he was saying that NASCAR is expected to run um, practice or qualifying at least at most tracks next year. They're at least going to qualify. They're going to have a one, maybe one or two laps of qualifying next year at, at most tracks. Um, probably right now they're targeting, they're shooting for all of them. Right now, they've confirmed most, and they're shooting for all. <sighs> that's cool. so, so they're, that's, they're trying to get it back to where it would be normally. Yeah, more normal. Um, yeah. I, I understand the teams have been the teams have really liked the um, the um, one day shows. Show mm -hmm. up on Sunday, get the car unloaded, make all your tweaks and adjustments. Any any minor, you yeah. make sure everything fired up because that's what they did last year. Last year they um. That was at Talladega. About an hour before the show, they came out, fired everything up, checked park plugs, checked your, your pl plug wires, um, make sure everything was all squared away on the car, fired them up, shut them back down. They probably ran for like 15, 20 minutes, and then it was, then the event started at 2 o'clock. Mm -hmm. one. It was a 1 o'clock local time. But um, so still early. Well, you send you send pressure here, and you drive back and play coverage. I'd send four. I'd, I'd send. Oh, I was there and get to him. Yeah, I got. That was. A Did they get him? Well, I'm like, I'm like. There's Joe Tryon right there. That's the rookie they drafted in the first round, number nine. Almost got him. There's JP. Hurried him up. 
Yeah. I was uh, I was listening to local radio here, guys, and they actually were um, talking to a morning show in Dallas, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and they were talking um, uh, about how they make fun of the Cowboys on their own show. Right. <laughs> yeah. He goes, our offense is great, but our defense is horrible. Not exactly the start you were looking for from nope. the defense, but they did get him off the field. Yeah. I wouldn't expect a fake here. Good, another good kick. Both punters had good kicks to start the. Start that was the, a bit of a tougher kick. Yeah. Yeah. And we got a commercial. As one would expect. Still early. A little bit of back and forth. Good. Jabs, uh, jabs in the first couple of rounds, feeling each other uh, out. Dallas has a slight hand here in the first series because what did uh, Tampa do in this first uh, series? Nothing. Yeah, they went three and they went quickly three and out. Yep. Um, and Tampa Bay was or Dallas was able to drive a little bit, had a little yeah. bit, had a decent little drive going. You know, far it stalled out, and then a couple of missed pass, mm-hmm. a couple of errant passes will do that to you. First and second down puts you in third and long. Right. And then you have a penalty. Um, and that killed it. Yeah, yeah, usually does. Hmm. It looks like, guys, that the NHL has finalized being able to send players. Yeah, to- yep. They, 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 they came to an agreement. They're going to be uh, – NHL players are going to be allowed to go play in the Olympics. Mm-hmm. I kind of saw that coming. Uh, a, a lot of people yeah. like the – a lot of people like the NHL players playing in the Olympics. Yeah, I do so. And uh, I don't. I've never I hmm. more than anything I'm worried about injuries. You know, I'd hate to lose a star guy for an extended period playing in an exhibition game. And I know it's the Olympics and gold medals and all that, but still, I for me it's a a problem. Well, they were, yeah. They were talking about that, but that was the biggest yeah. worry is what happens if you send one of your, you know, meaningful players to the Olympics? Yeah, OV. Oh, or Stamkos or right. Larkin or Stasny or you know, pick, pick your favorite guy, Crosby. Somebody goes And there. it doesn't even have to be anything dirty. Yeah. I've seen guys. Yeah. A guy blows a tire going into the boards and busts his heel. There was a guy playing in Carolina. I don't remember his name. But he absolutely shattered his heel and never played another never played another minute of NHL hockey. Wow. And, you know, and – and – um. And so, you know, that's my, you know, that's my biggest concern. I also like that I liked back in the day, I, you know, there was something special about the amateurs playing in the, in the, in the, in the, the Olympics. Mm -hmm. Guys who wouldn't have, guys who weren't going to go on to have NHL careers. Yeah, yeah. I mean, because also when, you know, how do you get back from the Olympics? You know, you only have about seven or eight weeks left until the playoffs, you know, start too. And right. That's uh, that's a lot of wear and tear on the body. You know, I, I, it's, I, you know, you're an extra four or five games. Yeah. Well, you have other teams that didn't send anybody or only, you know, you have some teams that are going to send three or four right. and some teams that aren't, or that may send one. Yeah. But and and then that's that balance between, between, having where or do you want the extra rest or are the extra reps better which is better which is you know that balancing act between extra reps mm-hmm. and extra rest yeah i mean you're taking a good portion of your nhl players with you to the to the olympics uh you know, yeah at that that's going to be that's going to be a problem i think you know as you head towards this rest room when you get back aha there's a catch by evans you know nice go um, yeah. no no I, I i agree with that but that's and you know what that should be a question that that's be like one of those uh, "would you rather" situations. Yeah, you rather have more rest for the two weeks that you're in the Olympics, or would you have the more reps going to the Olympics? Actually playing, yeah, actually, playing. and having you know, yeah. yeah, okay. So is is rest, you know, and then and there's no guarantee that you're gonna go and and win and medal. Exactly. Right. You know, right. you know, right. if you're guaranteeing me a medal, I would be more apt to go. But if I'm just going to go and play one or two games and get bounced in the, you know, in the qualifiers, I'd rather just stay home. Yeah. You know, yeah. obviously being an American, that's not something you got to worry about. But you got other players from from the smaller like Finland Czech- or um, Czech Republic, Czechoslovakia, um, 
uh, Slovenia, Slovakia, yeah. those former those former Eastern Bloc countries, those common Bloc countries that, um, ah, oh, dang it, okay, come back up here, um, that you have, and, and you know, and I just wonder, you know, is it is the two games that you're playing in 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 the Olympics? You know, to get bounced out in the quarterfinals or, or not even qualify, is it worth it? Yeah. Um, Brady to his Brady Brady to his security blanket. Right. Did you, did you did you guys see whoever that running back was? Did you hear him say, "No, right here, get right here." Right here. <laughs> Must be a rookie or something. That's yeah. interesting. How he you get right here? Get right uh, here. Yeah. Oh, what a catch by Brown! I hate that. I'm, couple, right, yeah. I'm like seven or eight seconds behind y'all. It's a big delay. Oh, that was a ding. I'm surprised he wasn't suspended. Who, uh, who's that, Antonio Brown? Yeah. You know, that fight in practice through punches. Oh, you in, the, in Tennessee? Yeah. In the, in the, I'm surprised. You're right, but I'm surprised that – I'm sure he was fine. I'm sure whoever – Yeah. They were lightened fine. his wallet. That yeah. was a dandy little route. Just got him on that – uh, in and up. And there it is again. Mm-hmm. I love that route. That little break in, you, you know, that step yeah. to the right and then back to the left or, or other, you know. That was a nice little sit down route. So I, I don't really understand this article. It, it says that something okay. about this is about the, uh, the NFL. Sorry, I, I can take it? a sip of water here soon because I. Yeah, sure. Yeah. I was eating sunflower seeds before the show, and I haven't had sunflower seeds in a long time. Actually, you like in football, not baseball. In the right. shell, in the shell, not the ones out of the shell. I actually like to take them out of the shell. Okay. I like sunflower seeds, so shell, no shell. I'm good with it. Um, um it's all for reasons. Something about there will be no cryptocurrency deals or something in the. I don't know what that means. I mean, it's in, like an athletic article. I don't know what this means. Where? In what league? In the NFL. Okay, so there was a player that wanted to get a salary in cryptocurrency. Maybe yeah, so I, Okay. Yeah, there was one player that had signed a deal to get his salary in crypto, uh, like Bitcoin or Dogecoin or whatever, you know. Uh, Something like that. I so the NFL say, Doge. the NFL put the kibosh on that. Good. Yeah, that's that was the thing. I mean, that was an ath- uh, athletic article, and I wanted to see. Right. There's uh, God. Uh, um, let me give you guys real quick. Nice cat. I guess the Washington football team is down to their final eight names of what they're going to call. Them. Eight, yeah. Hmm. Eight possible names. By I think Red Wolves. Yeah, I think Red Wolves yeah. was the number one. Yeah. Let's see here. I don't care as long as it's not the football team. That is so stupid. It's so dumb. I hate it. <laughs> the Washington football team. That's not even a name. What are you, a soccer club? Yeah. We're just we're just the football team. No, I can't. Oh, Touchdown. Touchdown. Chris Godwin. It's gonna be a long night for Tampa Bay for Dallas, isn't it? We'll see. Not exactly the uh, – looks good on that first defensive drive. And then this one, Brady made some adjustments. Man, that throw, that first step, that third and two, where he just missed him. Just missed him. I mean, that's Brady, man. 94 yards in four minutes, nine plays. Averaging 10 yards of – 10 yards of – they're in, they're in man. And Jordan Lewis gets beat. Ugh. Excuse me, it's a lot easier with the extra point nowadays. I know it's no gimme. I like it. Yeah, well, I was a big. Like the Red Hogs defenders, Armana Presidents Brigade, Commanders, Red Wolves, and then of course the team that it is now. So those are right. I just. I, I, what was the number one? Uh red, Whoa. red something. It wasn't the Red Wolves. It was something else. Red, red Fox Brigade or something like that. Red Fox. Red Fox. What do you think of that? 
Let me uh, Everyone's read Wolves, actually. Let's look at every – they have uh, – again, this is from The Athletic. Uh, the biggest worry for every NFL team this season. Since Our head coach. COVID. But we – me and – I wrote. I shared the article with you, man. I shared the article with you. Yeah, you did. I was oh, like yeah. – I was waiting for them to come back, and he <laughs> – comes back at me and says yeah our coach i'm like oh my god i'm like oh jesus all right hang on a second i gotta uh, i got the app on my phone and i don't have it set up on my computer yet so let me yeah i got you okay yeah you sent me that article and i was like oh great <laughs> i mean he, that was, he's a frat bro it was a it was a quick he came back real quick he's like no it's our coach <laughs> i'm like oh my god he fired back like right away. It was it was like right away. No hesitation. No hesitation. I'm curious. I'm curious to see what they say, but for for me, it's the you know, and that's being the Lions. I don't I don't know if I, yeah. I don't know if Lou picked up on that or not, but um, but you know, it's been the same. It's been a vicious cycle. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, uh, when when um, no, uh, Bob. Bobby Ross was there at the end of the 90s, so the first head coach that I knew. It was Wayne Fonts and then Bobby uh, Bobby Ross. Mm-hmm. And Bobby had a couple of good seasons. They let him go. You know, not great, but not terrible. Then they hired Steve Mar- or they hired Marty Morningwig. He stunk. And they fired him and brought in Steve Mariucci. In a couple of okay seasons, nothing great. They fired him. Right. Then they, hi- they hired Rob Marinelli. He stunk. They hired Jim Schwartz. A couple of good seasons. He left. I don't think they fired him. Then they hired. So he was Mary um, Schwartz. I think it was Caldwell. Was the, I think Caldwell was next. I feel like I'm missing somebody in between um, Schwartz and um, and and Caldwell. So Marinelli, Schwartz, and then Caldwell, and and then Patri- and then Caldwell had a couple good seasons. They fired him. Patricia sucked, mm. and, and I just don't know about Dan Campbell. I I I'm not sold on Dan Campbell. I I, I to, to you know again you know we talked I ranted about that a couple probably a month ago when training yeah. camp opened, and well, he's were, at. Well, you were saying about the the time they got into a fight. We talked about that on the show. Yeah, yeah. I I, training camp. I probably went on. I probably went on a. I probably went on for a good fifteen minutes talking myself into circles. I probably dug myself to China, going around and around and around about about that. Oh, and yeah. just, you know, and like I said, you know, and then I, you know, then watching preseason games, and with a little bit that I did get to watch, I don't get to watch all, you know, just whatever was on NFL Network. And once the game's over, you know, for, especially preseason, I don't really want to go back and rewatch it, um, especially if I can already, if I can see the highlights. And watching, you know, some of the some of the things that I just is lack of discipline, you know, no game plan. Um, I have a game plan. I don't know. Yeah. They just seemed like out. Of, they just seemed out of sorts, and, and you know, and especially for a rookie head coach, and you know, first year as a first year as a head coach. I mean, little rookie rookie head coach. And this this is his first gig. Not not just a new team, but a totally new philosophy in a terrible market. You know, you're not just taking over a, a a bad team like Dallas is a bad. You know, not to pick on Cowboys fans, right? But they've been they're they're been mediocre over the last decade. You know, and and um. And they bring in Mike McCarthy from Green Bay, you know, who has a, a winning pedigree, won a Super Bowl, Aaron Rodgers, the whole nine yards. We saw how he fell apart in, in Green Bay at the end. But you bring in Dan, you bring in uh, Mike McCarthy. And, it, you know, you have leadership and you have stability and you, you have that established veteran head coaching experience. And then you bring in, but to a dumpster, to the dog, you know, you're like, okay, we'll give it a couple years, see what Mike McCarthy can do, which I'm kind of surprised he didn't get fired after last season, but this season, you know, I think he's probably got to be, his seat's pretty hot. Yeah. Um, And and then you look at Dan Campbell, and he's just like a goon. He's a goof out there, mm-hmm. acting goofy. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, and and again, like I said, like I told Bradley, not my first choice. I wanted Robert Slay, uh, the one he ended up in New York the, with the Jets. That was the guy I wanted. And um, you know, and I just, I just, I just don't know. Yeah. Well, the Ar- so says, did you get? Th- yeah, that's not. But the Arizona Cardinals, it says, 
an already shaky situation at cornerback becomes an even a bigger liability now following Malcolm Butler's retirement. Right. Malcolm Butler did retire. Um, I think I think they have questions across the front, man. Yeah. Um I, I can Kyle Kyler Murray be can he can he step up and make take the next step? Right. That would be my biggest question. Yeah. It's probably um, gonna be a lot of my answers is can the quarterback step up and make the ne- take the next step? The uh Atlanta Falcons is an off season spent bolstering the offense with a new head coach, Arthur Smith, and a top five draft choice in Kyle Pitts leaves Atlanta with the same fatal flaw that existed in nearly the entire Matt Ryan era. I think this is trying to call out Matt Ryan. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's kind of what they're saying. Yeah. I'm Matt Ryan right well, and I would my, my biggest question for Atlanta is their defense. Right. Can their defense get back to where it was in 2016, 2017? Yeah. Well, I was I was watching uh, Urinating Trees thing today on the, the end. Uh, yeah, Hater's Guide to the No oh, Urinating yeah. Tree. He's, uh, he said he goes, they haven't been the same since. Uh, oh, yeah, you remember what happened. Yeah, he, yeah. We all know what he meant. Yeah. Well, what he yeah. meant. Said that. We all know it. It's okay. Um, Any little jab. Baltimore Ravens says oh, a yeah. weaker pass rush knocks down the defense a few notches. Putting uh, more pressure on this passing game. They, they got questions that – I mean, they don't have. It's not. It's not necessarily fair to the uh, to the athletic because this just broke a couple hours ago. No, no but that, yeah, that's not. Yeah, it. that that article is probably a day or two old at least. But um, they got questions at running back now. I saw that. Yes, they're yeah. Because what's his name got hurt? J.K. Dobbins, right? Dobbins and uh, Gus. What's his nuts? Edwards. Yeah. yeah because yeah. they picked up Le- They picked up Levy on Bell. Right. Yeah. Uh, and, and you know, yes. CD Lamb got a touchdown. That'll help Yay. my friend's fantasy points. Um, that hurts my fantasy. The Buffalo Bills is one or both lines aren't quite good enough for the Bills to reach the Super Bowl. Mm. Yeah, that's gonna be that's gonna be the real. I think it's the defensive line. I think that Josh Allen can make up for a lot of the deficiencies on offense. He, you know, just being such a good player, he, you know, he makes so many good plays. Mm-hmm. Uh, Carolina says, with so much focus on Sam Darnold, who is the quarterback of the defense? Mm, with Luke Clickley retiring. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, that's gonna yeah, that's gonna be the biggest question for for. And the other question is: Is who is Sam Darnold? That's going to be the real. That's the real question. Who is Sam Darnold? Is Sam Darnold the mess that he was? Is he just a mess? Yes. Sean Murphy. Yeah, that's, on the ground. that's that's a broken collarbone. The way he was, yeah. The way his arm was holding there, I, I think it is. Um, yeah. Chicago Bears, the offensive line, I, good enough for the Bears to support Andy Dalton. Or when the time comes, Justin Fields. I don't know. Um, the Bengals, after drafting receiver Jamar Chase over tackle a penny swell, the team is not efficiently improved at either spot. So we'll see. Um, Cleveland, it says the season becomes a rendendum of whether the Browns should make a long term commitment. To Baker Mayfield. Yep. Yeah. This uh, is Baker Mayfield's break it or make it or break it season. Here. That ball is absolutely crushed. Um, Dallas's defense still isn't good enough, even under new head coordinator Dan Quinn installed a scheme better suited for the personnel. Well, so far, it's looked pretty good so, so far tonight. Yeah. Um, the Denver Broncos beyond the quarterback situation, which everyone talks about, there are five potential issues. On the offensive line. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Jeez. Uh, I said a crosser knows not up it. Yeah. Uh, Detroit. First round pick, Benny Swell, faces a larger than hope for adjustment period, giving the line from becoming as strong as the Lions thought it would be in Dan Campbell's first season as head coach. 
So they're talking about the offensive line being the biggest story, not the head coach. <laughs> <laughs> so just thought I would let you know that, bud, that it wasn't the head yeah. coach that they're entirely. Right. I was, I was, I was curious where they were going to go with that, but yeah, the offensive. I'm sticking line. to my. I'm sticking to my guns on this one. Yeah, I'm yeah. gonna. I'm still gonna say, you know, um, I, that is the what the the true test of a head coach is. What he can he do when he doesn't have when he doesn't have the best. Right. When he's just working with whatever he's got. Uh, Green Bay Packers, it says the offensive line takes a step back with left tackle David Bakhtiari, sideline for at least six games and young faces in new places. Mm. Uh, Houston, the Texans wind up being both old and bad in a terrible combination. Makes sense. They, they're, that's a big mess. Yeah, they're a dumpster fire. Yeah. Who's in, who did they? Oh, Tyrod Taylor. He got the he got the nod there. That's, That's who that was. Yeah, because Deshaun Watson is a apparently a terrible person. Yeah, yeah, pretty allegedly, much. allegedly, yeah. allegedly, yeah. allegedly. Yes. The uh, Indianapolis Colts Carson Wentz plays well enough to stay in the lineup, but not well enough to make the Colts a Super Bowl contender. I. Which Carson Wentz are you going to get? 2015 Carson Wentz was setting the world on fire and looked like a surefire MVP before the knee? Or, or is it going to be the last four years of Carson Wentz where he's struggled every single week? It's That's the question. Four years. I, I, you know, in some look at Ryan Tannehill, though. You know, he goes from he goes from the dumpster fire that is Miami with Adam Gates, who, who, and then he goes to Ten, Tennessee and change the of, change of scenery. Well, is the change of scenery what Carson Wentz needs to become a better football player, and, and just a new opportunity, a new chance to to do something? To read. he's got J.K. De- or Tyrod, shit, he's Jonathan. got um, yeah. Jonathan Taylor. Thank you. <laughs> well, he's on my fantasy team. College. Yeah, got to watch him play in college. Yes, I did. I had to watch that some bitch play in college. Mm-hmm. Well, oh, he he man. came he came here, bud, and played USF, he, and he murderized him. So I got uh, to- not. You know? Yeah, didn't you? Did you get this? Was there a no? Wisconsin didn't play. No, it was Minnesota that played in the uh, uh, that bowl that you went to. Oh yeah, they beat Auburn. That yeah, yeah. This is a scary. This are the oh no, that's the arm. His arm is just broken. Mm. Oh dear. Mm. Well, the- it's not the I I I I I didn't realize how badly his arm got hit. His arm's broke. So the Jaguars in Jacksonville mm-hmm. lacks the infrastructure to support prize rookie Trevor Lawrence. I thought it was a mistake trading away Gardner Minshew. Me too. Yeah. Personally, I would have kept Minshew and started him. I would have started Minshew um, before and, and you know what what I would have done is I would have started Minshew, played Minshew, and worked Trevor Lawrence in. Get him some reps, especially in garbage time. If we're not if it's not close, he plays a couple series. He plays with the number ones, plays with the twos, gets a lot of reps late in the game. Keep him healthy, keep him safe, but get his feet wet, get him some experience. And, and we're, you know, assuming that we're not going to be a very good team. Um, and, and that's no slight against the, you know, you know, everybody, you know, just understand that you just don't have the personnel, you know, that, that, right. that you just don't have the person, you know, I hate to say that because, you know, these guys are professionals, you know, nobody's going out there trying to suck. Right. Well, uh, no, you're you're right. <laughs> you know, you know, there's just what you know. You say that you know being conduct detrimental to the team. You know, you go out there and you put it on the line every week because you know whether you're a top guy. Because if you're a top guy, if you're a top flight guy, somebody that everybody you know expects to be doing well, and you and you're not, then everybody wonders what happens to you. And then if you're not, and, and then if you're a bottom guy, you want to be, um, you want to try and improve your station in the NFL. And especially if you're, you know, one of those guys who's been a journeyman, played for three or four or five, six teams in, in four years, you're looking, you know, you're not going to go out, you're going to go out there and lay it on the line every week. It's, you're, you know, and just, you just don't have the personnel to be able to do it. Like, you know, uh, Tampa Bay or Kansas City, you know, take your pick of your top teams. Right. 
you know, so for me, you know, that's not to knock the, the, the Jaguars as a, you know, personnel, as individuals, just knowing that they don't have the personnel to protect Trevor Lawrence and putting him in that, that precarious situation where he's going to have to go out there and try to be the man in week one. I don't like it. Uh, Kansas City, it's the Chiefs' overhaul of their offensive line. Fails Agreed. to pay off, as they hoped. Uh, yeah, that's going to be the biggest question. Um, the Las Vegas Raiders changing defensive players is enough to upgrade a defense that ranked 30th in expected points added last season, according to True Media. So they're saying their defense is still going to suck. Mm. Uh, John Gruden is the problem in Vegas. Thank you. That's true. There you I, I, I could, well, John, I was excited. I was excited for Gruden to come back. Because I thought, you know, I want to see what he can do. And he talks a lot of shit. And see what you can do. You can't do it anymore, John. Right. Go back to the booth. I love John Gruden. I, yeah. I like John. I like John Gruden 20 years ago. He's probably passionate, good at football. I like listening. Gruden's quarterback camp, some right. of the best. Qu- yep. Right. Did we get, did he walk up there, Lewis? Did he froze up? He did, yeah. I think he's frozen there. Wow. Quarterback Kelly's in. And we're back. There you are. There he goes. Okay. Um, yes, I agree, Bud, before you broke up. I, I used to watch used to tune into ESPN just to watch that. Just to watch that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was great. It was great. Uh, I love John Gruden. And John Gruden's an incredibly smart football mind. But the game has changed right. so much since he was a great smart, you know. Yes. Being a great football mind, I think that's what makes John Madden so rememberable. Is because he got out before the game left him. Yeah. You know, he retired when he was at his peak. And then he goes into the broadcast booth and he takes and breaks the game down on a level that anybody can understand without belittling people that have been around the game for, you know, people like the three of us. We're football. We ain't breathing sleep this shit. You know, but, you, basketballs, but, you know. You know, just being, you know, as part of what we do. We're engaged every week. We know what a Tampa two is. We know what quarters is. We we know all these terms. You don't have to tell us every week. And John Madden had this ability to mm-hmm. to tell him the same thing, week in and week out, game in and game out, and yet be so mindful of the fact that 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 there are people who are watching who know what's going on, and not talk down to us. Like I feel a lot of color guys talk down to us. Well, I think I'll be honest with you. Him and Pat Summerall were the best. I think, oh ever. my, best yeah, best duo ever. Yeah, yeah. Um, I again, I'm a lot older than I know you are. I'm, I'm younger than Lewis, but I grew up watching right. Pat John Summerall and Pat. Yeah, Pat. yeah. But I, you knew, you knew it was, you knew it was an important game if it was on Fox and, and John were, and Pat were there. And yep. CBS in the in, yep. in, the, in the early days, yeah. yeah. Early uh, John and Pat were for me when I got into football. John and Pat were on Fox. They they were on Fox. Oh God, you are young. And then Pat retires. Pat retires, and then um, John goes over to ABC, and John and Al were just yeah. Caught, they were just so good together. Yeah. Well, it could have been worse. You know, you could have had you know uh, Dennis Miller. Oh boy. Oh, no. We won't even go. Let there. me some Dennis Sorry. He did what? Uh, Oof. Oof. The, uh, the Oof. Uh, L.A. Chargers, it says changing coaches and schemes could help. I didn't like that. Hubert, but it's yeah. also possible Hubert could take a step back for while making an adjustment. So H- Hubert could take a step back. You know, we talk about that on, on a semi-regular basis, but you got a year of film on him now. Yeah. You got his tendencies. You know his quirks. So, you know. That uh, that to, Yeah, go ahead. To me, that's the that's the thing that's gonna be the, the difference maker is um whether Justin Herbert can can continue. Is can he can he continue to progress, or is this new offense gonna f- force him to change, and not do, not do what he does well? Mm-hmm. Um, the uh, Rams. It says a top-heavy roster makes the Rams mm. vulnerable to injuries. 
with Cam Akers out. You got Sonny Michelle, obviously, kicking his spot. Um, uh, the Miami Dolphins, it says, Tua isn't good enough to get the Dolphins into the playoffs, despite Harold upgrades to their spots on the roster. That's tough. Yeah. I don't know why everybody's so down on Tua. I don't get it. Well, well I mean, we'll see. Well, We're going to see on Sunday, and they play the Patriots. So we'll oh, see. Are they playing New England to kick it off? Well, yeah, Patriots are the same team where they once were, so. Well, no, I'm, I, I, but they're they're better defensively this year than they were last year. Mm. You went out, they went out, and got some, they upgraded their defense. They got and they got players coming back that were hours back. Yep. Kyle Van Noy's back. So yeah. Yep. I just don't yep. know why everybody is so surprised that Newton was cut. Am I the only one who's not I was, surprised? I was surprised. I was I was surprised, but not shocked. No. Hmm. He did I mean, not play well in the preseason. No. He didn't play well in the free hit, but one good series no. and that in three games, and to me that's not enough. Neither was for Belichick. Yeah, one good series in the preseason. Whereas um oh, no. wow. once his nuts there, Mac Jones looked good the entire preseason. Yeah. Yes. More consistent. Uh, Minnesota Vikings, it says, cornerback troubles need to play the Vikings as they face the NFL's third toughest schedule of opposing quarterbacks. Mm. I it's really there. Um, the Patriots having no viable alternative for Mac Jones makes the Patriots overly depending on a rookie quarterback. I would have to agree with that. Mac's just going to have to stay healthy. He has no choice but to stay healthy. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, you know... It's not that they can't. It's not like they can't bring Cam back if he if Jones gets hurt. Yeah, they can bring Cam back. Absolutely. They can make a deal. Deshaun Watson is available. Yeah. At least it seems like he might be. I mean, he's not getting the nod in in ten, Tennessee. Or, um, oh, he's not getting the nod in Tennessee either. Right. <laughs> Houston uh, is what I mean. Nope. <laughs> the uh, the uh, the Saints. It says the defense won't be good as the Saints needed to be in the post Drew Brees era. I do you think that the defense is the issue and then then yeah, okay. Well <laughs> is that really where we're going with this? We're, we're, we're not gonna hey, we're, we're not gonna wrote. <laughs> this is what this author wrote. We're 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 not gonna talk about the turnovers in the oven. Are you talking about famous Jameis? Is that yeah, what famous Jameis is bakery of turnovers. <laughs> yeah. Is that what uh, you're referring to? I was goodness. Um the New York Giants. Hey, that's a deep cut. If you know that reference. Yeah. Yes. Uh, continuing struggles in the pass protection prevent quarterback Daniel Jones from reaching his potential. What potential? <laughs> Daniel Jones has reached his potential. Yeah. It's not very good. Nope. <laughs> I, 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 gotta, I go to admit, I was wrong. I mean, I was right, but I was wrong. Daniel Jones is, is a better quarterback than Dwayne Haskins, oh, yeah. but he's not a good quarterback. No. Um, it says the New York Jets, the defense suffers not only without an injured Carl Lawson, but with a secondary that could struggle even against yeah. your schedules of opposing quarterbacks. They, I they also it. have questions on offense and special teams. And I think the hot dog vendor sauce too. <laughs> but maybe, maybe the hot dog vendor is the only one on that, on, in that, on that. That and that's reliable. The beer guy. I mean, he'll get you a Bud Light every time. But that's about it. <laughs> um, Grab the hot dog guy. Or, yeah, I know, right? Yeah. Oh, oh, look at this. Oh, oh, oh. Flag, flag. Walk in the back. Yep. Uh the Philadelphia Eagles having performers in the two most important positions could backfire. They're referring to. Head coach and quarterback. <laughs> Where was that? Holding the receiving team. Huh? Was holding on the receiving side. The Eagles. Uh, yeah. I like. I like. Uh, I think Hurts can be a good quarterback. I. I think if they if they tailor the offense to do what Taylor Hurts does well, I, and that goes back to what I said about two at the end of last year. Is that they got you got to tailor your offense to your quarterback's strengths. Right. Um, Pittsburgh is the secondary struggles while playing the second toughest schedule 
of opposing quarterbacks. That's what they're saying in Pittsburgh. And Ben uh, and Ben's on his last leg. He's on borrowed time at this point. Yeah. yeah. I agree. And 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 we'll we'll have to see if he's um still got it. Mm-hmm. Because they ran through everybody like a hot knife through butter for the first 11 weeks last year. Then they got caught up in a COVID situation and, and had to play that game on Wednesday afternoon, which is awesome because I meant got to mean I got to watch football on Wednesday afternoon at work. So that was good. I'm always down for that. So am I. But um, but what what are we gonna get? Which Ben what what can and not which Ben Roethlisberger are we gonna get? But what can Ben Roethlisberger do? You know, can he can because you know the uh, the best defense is a good offense. If the if the if the Steelers can hold the ball and control the clock, and they can limit the time of possession for the other team. Yeah, that can can solve a lot of your defensive woes. Right. And you play a little bit of keep away. <laughs> um, uh, TJ Watt just got signed. Signed. So yep. That's a massive. That's a good, yeah. That's a massive boon to that uh, that defense there. Right. Uh, for the 49ers, this is a cornerback position that was a liability when Richard Sherman was on the team, remains a liability even without him. That is their biggest. Uh, I think that I think that the Forty Nine ers could have a quarterback controversy on their hands. That's yeah, that's true. Yep. Um, because if if um, Jimmy G. Yeah, if he struggles G. for a couple of weeks, and they lose, especially if they lose to the Lions in Week One, mm-hmm. it, it, and he struggles and he doesn't look good. Uh, if he's seventeen for thirty-four with a touchdown and two picks, and and he and he, and he doesn't crest two hundred yards, and and they lose that game, Trey Lance is going to be there's going to be a lot of media in San Francisco, yeah. wanting wanting a, wanting a there's going to be a, a a large a vocal minority wanting a switch. Yeah. Um, no, we're in, yeah. No, I, I, gonna, I think that's the biggest. I think the biggest concern is at the quarterback position for San Francisco. Yeah, I, I, I said it going into this article. The, the, the there's a lot of teams with quarterback issues. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, Seattle. It says the cornerback situation remains an issue, even with Marquez Ware returning from injury and providing a hard hitting option at nickel, and possibly even elsewhere. Well, that's their biggest concern. Um, Tampa Bay um, having one of the NFL's oldest rosters by average. Age leads to key injuries after Tampa Bay succeeded in bringing back every key player from its Super Bowl team. And they already lost one in they already lost one in the first quarter. Yeah. To what what appeared to be a very fairly severe injury. Um, at, at first blush, that did not look that looked really bad. Yeah. Well, I guess we'll have to keep watching and see if they tell us what exactly happened. Yeah. What happened to him? I haven't I haven't heard if he's been sent out or not, but I would imagine that he's going to be he's well, going to they're going to have to send. Did you guys see where the Bucks came out of the tunnel in the beginning of the game? Yes. Uh I was watching other things. I was waiting for the game. What 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 I miss? Anything interesting? No, no. The, what I mean is that's the tunnel that I come out of when I go on. Oh, okay, cool. So I get to come out of the same tunnel that they do when they. Oh, was one. Is that was that a was that a hit to the head? Was that a blow to the head? Might have been. Is that a thin pro ball? Targeting calls did you see in college football over the weekend? That's not like, enough. Not enough. Yeah. Uh, are we going to get into that? Because the end, because we, well, we got two we have have targeting. We got two. The more Big Ten. Go okay, go ahead. Sorry. Tennessee. Um, Former offense coordinator Arthur Smith really has a huge key behind the Titans. Outstanding production on that side of the ball. So I don't know what that means. Who Brian. replaced? Didn't does it say who they brought in to replace him? Hmm. Uh, under uh, quarterback uh, Todd Downing has been there. He's got the playbook. He's got the scheme on the play. So I guess Todd Downing is the new offensive coordinator. I don't know anything about him. Never heard of him. About him either. Yeah. And then, Uh-oh. 
offset. Mm. Okay. Um, and then Washington is questionable offensive line reduces the already uncertain chances the team gets a solid full season from quarterback Ryan Fitzpatrick. No, they won't. Oh, here we go right here, but uh, Sean Murphy bunting rolled out, headed to the locker room with an apparent <laughs> elbow injury. I thought his arm was snapped. After yeah. a scary- his arm was, his arm was like, oh, it was like floppy. It looked like Harry Potter in the that, <laughs> yeah, after that Quidditch match. There was one of the guys. This is on Bleacher Report. The app on Bleacher Report. It says that that did not look good at all. <laughs> That's what one of the comments said. No. That yeah, not look good at all. Um, yeah. yeah, we could t- we could talk about the um, the targeting calls in college football. If you want there to was um, the Big Ten officiating crew in the Minnesota Ohio State game. Totally whiffed on one. Mm-hmm. And didn't, um, didn't they? Didn't they? Didn't the Ohio State player get to stay in the game? Yeah, they didn't. They didn't call it at all. Yeah, they didn't even throw the flag or anything. No. And you know the whole point of the whole point of targeting and putting that rule in was to protect both both players. Right. And it's, you got too many. You got too many assholes running around with the, using their head like a weapon. Right. And um, you got too many guys that just lead with their head. You know, when I was coming up, there's, a, there's that. There's an old United Way commercial with Derek Brooks. Yes. You know, and, and they're sitting on the tarmac, and the 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 luggage cart gets away from from the guy, and he and Derek Brooks is looking out the window. And uh, he goes to make the he goes to make the tackle, and he's like, and uh, he totally whips on it. And he's like, you "Look, uh, how does it go?" He's like, "Head up, hit what you see, what you hit, hit what you see." Yeah. Wrap up, drive through. You know, and too many guys they want to go for that monster hit, and I, I think that yeah. you know we're 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 into the era we're into a we're into an era where um that's a touchdown. It is where. We're, we've got a lot of players that grew up playing Madden, a lot of young guys coming in, you know, and, and even veterans that grew up playing Madden. Guys, most most guys are that are getting drafted now, and and guys that are in the league, except for maybe Tom Brady here, they grew up with Madden. They grew up with the hit stick, and and you know you fly down there and you, and and there's no real, there's no consequences in 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 a video game, you know. There's no there's no you don't get hurt. You know, yeah, yeah, maybe a guy gets hurt in the video game, but there's no consequences for you. No. And and then, you know, and you you make that huge massive hit and you knock the ball free. And it's a, you know, it's a momentum shifter. And you know, it was the biggest knock on Lewis Delmas in Detroit mm-hmm. was he was out of control. He was playing out of control. And so he'd be he'd be more concerned about making the big hit than he was about playing his position. And more often than not, that hit wasn't worth it because, well, what happened is you know, he might make the big hit, but then again, he might whiff on the play. And more often, it was a, it was a 50-50 play, man. You know, half the time he'd come in and deliver that big blow and make a big play, but then the other half of the time, he's missing that blow and the other team's making a play. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. you know, just as much as it was to protect offensive players, so many guys would come down, drop their head, hit with the crown of their helmet, mm-hmm. and and break their own neck. Yes. Yeah. And that was that became that that was you know those scary collisions. And you know and every and I've said it before. Yeah. And I, I I've, I've everybody every everybody likes the woo hit until it's their guy. Then it's dirty. Yeah. Everybody's like woo, and then it's dirty. Yeah. When it's their guy that gets hit, when it's their guy that gets hurt, oh, that was dirty. Like if it's two teams that nobody that you don't care about, you know, and and somebody gets hurt, ah, it's just football. But if it's your guy that gets hurt, then it's dirty right. and it's and it's unacceptable. And exactly. Well, I mean, you you remember guys back when they used to do that jacked up segment on all the NFL shows on ESPN, That's right? right. And then once the once the you know the movie concussion came out and right he is now a you know big into all growing concerns not just so much football 
Because CTE can be, you know, suffered in hockey, any, soccer, any any any, any, any contact sport. sport. Yeah, NASCAR. NASCAR, correct, absolutely. Um, any any kind of any any sport where you can take major trauma to the head, CT CTE can be a concern. Yes, exactly. I I remember watching there was a thirty for thirty on the eighty five Bears. I forget what it was called. Uh, maybe it wasn't thirty for thirty. It was there was a documentary on the eighty five Bears? Yeah, and um. Jim McMahon once a week has to get fluid drained off the spine so he doesn't die. Yep, I saw that. Because of how violent the game was 30 years, 50 years, 40 years ago now. What well, did you see so that he, he's the one that got like slammed down by some dumbass? Yeah, it was a Packer. I think yeah. it was the Packers. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. There, there was a lot of. And, you know, I know Jack Lambert in the 70s was, was complaining about football being soft. Sure. And I think it was in 75, 76, he was giving an interview. And he's like, you might as well just put tutus on him if you're not going to be allowed to hit him. I mean, and and really? in the 70s, everything but clotheslining was legal. Yeah. I mean, you could probably go out there with everything but an Uzi at that, in that day. Yeah. And, you know, you know. As much as I love football, and and, and I, you know, we, we talked about it earlier in the show. Is I, you know, I eat, breathe, you know, I eat, and sleep, and breathe this shit. I'm there for it all. Yes. You know, I I love football, but it's just a game, and your life's not worth a game. Exactly. No. And your health and your wellness, you you play you play your life so much. This is your life at the beginning. This is your life at foot in football, and then this this is is. Eh, if I can get my in in the camera shot, yeah. Okay, I'm I'm. It's a reverse image, so I'm having on. This is your life outside of football. This is everything else that you do after football. This is your life before football. Your life during football. Your life after football. There we go. Yes. It's a reverse image, so I'm having issues with it. <laughs> you know, and and so your long term, you know, football. Even if you play, even you know, Tom Brady. This was his life before football. This was his life during football, and this is the rest of his life after football. Yeah, again, stupid reverse image. You know, he's going to have another 40 years after football. Yeah. <coughs> right. And, and your, your life after football is going to, ideally, is going to be so much longer than your life during football, protecting yeah. your, you know, and... You know, guys like Barry Sanders and, um, Car yeah, they got out of it because it wasn't fun. I mean, getting your brains beat in every week for, for nothing. No, not worth it. It's really well, not worth it. And that's Space Garden. How, you can't how, do that. How many, what, oh. Barry made it to what, one playoff game, two playoff games in his career? Uh, two, I believe. And then, yeah, two, because they won the first one and they beat Dallas in 91, they beat Dallas and then they lost to. Um, Washington, the eventual Super Bowl champions. And then, then, then make it. Then make it try and get to. And one, then they get to one playoff game. Three. Three playoff games. Okay. Three. Two or three. I don't remember. I think it was three. Yeah, because he retired in 2016. I think three. Right. And I mean, and and, and he suffered through the 0 and 16 season. Yeah. Oi. And, and Barry. For as good as Barry was, he was the only guy that was any good. Yeah. I mean, how many times – and I know that, you know, you guys didn't watch the Lions. But I, I remember turning – you know, having – having, and, and, you know, thank you, Lucky Stars, you didn't have to watch the Lions. Yeah. Um, I know as a Jets fan, that, that probably stings not nearly as – as, as Yeah, it's bad enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, But – at least you have a Super Bowl championship. Hang your hat on that. 52 years ago. Hey. And you have two. I don't want to hear it. Um, but how many times you turn the Lions game on and it's 24 to, you know, it's 24 to 7 halfway through the fourth quarter and Barry's got 12 rushes for 50 yards. He busts off a 62 yarder for a score. And now he's got, he's got 16 carries for 105. But it's only it's fourteen to twenty four now, and the game's over. 
Yeah, you know, how many garbage time touchdowns did he have? Because the Lions just weren't any good. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, they they they'd win eight, nine, ten games, miss the playoffs. Never had a season under a thousand yards in his entire career. Ran for over ten thousand yards in his, in nine seasons. It's incredible. Had a two thousand yard rushing season. One of like seven guys who ever done it. And he has nothing to hang his hat on. No. He's got his Hall of Fame jacket, but that's about it. He probably ran for like fifteen thousand yards a season because he went backwards for so many to get go. Forward. I know. And and, and the that. the most the most negative place from scrimmage in, in, in NFL history. Yeah. And and that's what the, the offensive lineman in Detroit would always complain about. Is that, you know, very the play would be you know, it'd be a it'd be a, a trap to the backside. Mm-hmm. And so you're blocking your guy to the left. You're you're you know, okay, my guy's gotta go this way, this guy's gotta go that way. Okay, I make the block, take him to the left. Barry comes up, cuts back against the grain, and he's gonna be, you know, and it's one on one on the outside. But Barry didn't like it. Nope. So at in the in the hole, Barry decides to go to the right or go to the left, because you got your guy blocked left, and the guy just Rips over the top of you, right on top of Barry. They called that a completed pass. Looks like you only got one foot in. You can't do that. Huh. Got away with one. Oh, oh, there you go. Okay, I didn't see that either. Okay, yeah, because uh, I, I know um, in the pros you got to have two feet down in college. Right. Yep. One. Yeah. That's a hell of a shot right there, though. But no, I, I agree. I mean, I, I saw a lot of, uh, you know, uh, and, and unfortunately, if you go up, if you if you go and look, if you go and look at a highlight reel, they're not going to show those plays where he was dancing around in the backyard for three or four seconds looking for a hole that never materialized, mm-hmm. because that's not a highlight play. Yeah, and, and Barry didn't like contact. Barry would run away from contact. Yep. So on third and three, third and two, third and one, when you needed one yard, Barry wouldn't hit the hole and go forward. Barry would try to be busting a fifty-yard run. He'd be uh, he'd be back there dancing, looking for a hole, looking for a hole, looking for a hole that never materialized, and they lose two yards on the play and have to punt. Well, he did that too, but in college uh, at Oklahoma yeah. State, same right. thing. He never he he stayed away from contact. He did not like to be hit. Right in any way, shape, or form. If he could stay away from contact, and he didn't, and he he didn't have breakaway speed either. No, no. He was good for about forty yards. Yeah. So he'd hit the hole, maybe a two foot wide hole. He'd hit it. He'd be through it to the second, you know, to the second level in the secondary, and he'd have one man to beat, and and he'd be out of gas after forty yards. Yeah. Right. Well, I mean, like you said, he didn't. I really, if you if you think back to that era, there wasn't there wasn't really any running backs that did have breakaway speed. Emmett Smith didn't have breakaway speed either. No, none of those running backs. No, did. I mean, in that era, that none of them really did. Um, yeah, yeah, they didn't. There weren't any burners like they like in the mid two thousands. Right. Exactly. I mean, Bo Jackson had breakaway speed. Yes, yes he did. How about Herschel Walker? Would you put him up there? Yeah, yeah, no, I would yeah. say I would. Say, yeah, Herschel would be one of them. I would agree with that. No. Herschel was a beast, Herschel. but Herschel could hit. But Herschel was so big Herschel. and strong. Herschel is running for uh, some kind of government. Uh, yeah, in Georgia, I think. Georgia, yeah. Yeah, I think he's running as a Republican Governor down in Georgia or something. He's Senator, running. I believe. Yeah. He. You know what? I wouldn't be surprised well, if he didn't win. That would be awesome. Yeah, he would. I, he should win going away down in Georgia. State of Georgia. He he, he might he well, might have. Nick, yeah, why not? He might have a tougher time in Minnesota, but in Georgia, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. I th- he, I he think... could run, he could run for God in Georgia and and, and probably yeah. win. Yeah, yeah he's, a bull, he's a bulldog. He's, he's he, a yeah, bulldog. yeah. I mean, he's the, he's the yeah. He's the reason why people name their kids Herschel in Georgia. Right. Yep. You got yeah. you got a half a dozen white kids running around named Herschel. So I mean, <laughs> you know, only a half dozen. <laughs> I just, just I, I can, in one school. Oh, 
Oh, wow. <laughs> in one school, you got a half a dozen school. white kids in name Herschel. Okay, roll call. Herschel. Herschel number two. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo, yeah everybody yeah. in the class, raise your hand if you're Herschel. Okay, there we go. We got five. Okay, of them. Herschel G, Herschel K, Herschel Q, F G. H. Right. What's your middle name? Well, yeah. Herschel <laughs> Walker. <laughs> yeah. First name Herschel. Second middle name Walker. Yep. That's gonna be a flag. Nah, no call. Oh, no call on that one. No. They've been calling. They've been calling it pretty tight. Mm, I don't know. Early in this game. Oh, do you go that for it here? Been, been a pick right there. It <laughs> should have been. Like yeah, it should. He should have backed off a little bit earlier. He's one I second. Three, huh? Okay. And take the three. Play for. It's too early to go for it. Fourth and three from the opponent's three. twenty-five. You dumbass. Did he miss it? He missed it. He missed it. I play. Uh, I have a hard time not going for that. Again, I play Madden a lot, so there's no. There's no I can turn if I <laughs> if I <laughs> if I'm on fourth and fifteen. He's going fourth, for it on fourth and fifteen. Fourth and thirty. Fourth and thirty from my own one. I'm going for it. If I don't make it, I'm turning up. Fourth, fourth and thirty. Fourth and thirty from my own one. I'm going for it, Danny. Fourth and thirty from your own one. Why not? Right. Might as well. I just turn it off if I, if I don't make it. Right. <laughs> Um, but really doing another Matrix movie? They are. Oh my god! Good lord. Well, Reeves better get his. I mean, that's made. That's made his career. So yeah, yeah. That TV yeah, sure. career made his career. That's how Bill and Ted did. That and well, that and John Wick. Wick. And John Wick. I mean, he's got some great movies. Oh. Speed. The first speed movie. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. He's in both of them, wasn't he? No. No, it wasn't in the second one. Is he not in Speed 2? No. No, he even saw that movie. I, yeah. Obviously, because I thought he was in it. Yeah, no. <laughs> how far are we from with that bomb? We have what, what, 95 miles an hour now? How, far, how close are we with the bomb getting off? 50 miles an hour. Keep it about 50 miles. Mi Keep it about 50 miles an hour. Yeah. I saw the first one. Excellent movie. But uh, Andy Bullock. Mwah. Yes, there you go. Good, Lewis. Good. She's a good choice. She's a good Let's choice. Blow this guy. Oh, even at her age now. Yes. Yeah. Let's I have see. a thing for older women anyway. So. No, what, 55? Wow. Yeah. I have a whole. I have a thing for older I, women anyway. So. I didn't know she was fifty-five. Holy cow! Yeah. I realize. Okay. Let's wow. blow this guy away. Blow this guy. Oh wait. Demolition, man. That was a good movie too. I love my Yes, favorite. it was. Yeah. Yeah, one of my favorite too. Away. Nice. Blow this guy away. Yeah. Snipes and uh Stallone. That's going to be yeah. a uh, matchup. Yeah. Does yeah. Get they, were, match? they were perfect for those roles. Yep. Well, speaking of that, I guess they're doing a new uh uh what's that movie? Um what's the movie with him? The expandables or expendables or something like yeah. that? They're making another Expendables? Movie. Yeah, they're coming out. They're doing that. another Expendables? Ah, that's what I heard. Why? They find, I, they're making another Matrix not movie. Not even right now. I don't know. I don't yeah, know. like Scrambles. They're old, though. You know? I'm going to give somebody some money is what the problem is. Yeah, somebody, yep. Yeah. So, yeah, but Expendables, they're, those guys are old. Yeah, they're expendable. Mm. The old the old action like underwear. just won't go away. Expendable, just like underwear. Mm. Is it a fumble or is he down? Oh no, it's gonna you know, say that fumbled it. Malaya. I want to see the replay. I'll, see if was he, he down before the ball came out? That guy, this, that is guy the, right this is the stuff row, right here. Guy in the front row is flicking them off. That is this, beautiful. This is the stuff right here. This is the stuff right here that should be flagged. That's to me. That's uh -huh. the, that's unnecessary. Yo, you want to do a dance? Fine, whatever. Yes, there's a fumble. The you want to do a dance? You want to? To me, that's the that's to me that is the definition of excessive celebration. There, you yeah. didn't score a touchdown. You didn't. You didn't. That's you, true. you got. You got a recovery. Okay, so you want to get a, do a quick dance? And no, then, you know, we gotta do with it. That's the thing. 
You got the ball. Now do something with it. Right. To me, that's the stuff that should get flagged. Right. It's totally unnecessary. It's it's showboating. It's, 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 un, it, it's unnecessary. Right. Just get back in the huddle. Yeah. You know, to run 25 yards down the field and act like you've done something. Right. Penalty for being a dumbass on the offense. Yeah. On the offense. A face mask that didn't get called. <laughs> that grabbed his face mask. That didn't get called. Good field position, too. Throw the ball, stupid. You. Yeah, like we said, do something with the ball. Yeah. They're in the zone. How do you miss him 25 yards anyway? Mm. Anything below was, five yards, I think, is always manageable. Yeah. 38. Yeah, Dean Dean is the replacement for Sean Murphy Bunting. Yeah. That's that's tough. Time out. Yeah, he never wears his he never wears the headset on a on a waist. He always has it around no. his chest. Bruce doesn't do anything out of normal. See, Bruce always does this. Nope. <laughs> I wonder if that's so he can easily flick it up and down to switch to the different. I'm going to say, but I agree with you. I think that's exactly why he doesn't. So he doesn't have to worry about it being on the side. He just flicks it on his chest. Okay, defense. He doesn't have to try and figure. He just look down and go, okay, defense, offense, special teams. You can switch. If if the if the if the headset goes out, you can switch to the other one. Right. The one that the one that uh, I Tampa like called a timeout. And uh, all right, Saban throws it on the ground and breaks it. Right. Right. Saban does that all the time. Yes. Yeah. I don't think he really had much to be pissed off about last Saturday. I don't think he's gonna have a lot. To I'm sure he found something. It's Nick. Oh yeah, no, I'm sure he had yeah. something. In in the film, the bitch and his kids about always, and that's why he's so damn good. Yeah. Yep. Oh, right where they vacated the, you throw into the blitz. In the blitz. You throw. You throw at the blitzer. Five. The vacated spot where the blitzer came from. You think Mike McCarthy's on the hot seat? Yeah, I do. What? Maybe, maybe unfair no. because he didn't have Dak all of last season. No, but yeah, I think he is. Yeah, touchdown. Now, yeah, Arnold Jones fumbled the ball, and it resulted in a touchdown. I thought it was Fournette that fumbled. No, right. It was Ronald Jones. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Fournette switched to to seven. Well, you get an extra, you get an extra half a heartbeat because everybody pulls up. Yeah, yeah. And that really wasn't good coverage on thirty by thirty-five there. Well, that's like I said. Dean is the uh, he's the replacement of Murphy Bunting, so. Oh, he missed the extra point. The extra point, you suck. So he's missed a field goal and an extra point. That's Greg Zerlin. You're gone. You're gone. Point. Mr. Automatic, and he's missed two kicks. You're not going to last much longer, buddy. Yeah, they might be looking for a new kicker after tonight. Oh. 
Yeah. Didn't have it. He didn't have it high and tight. He had it out here and just and get it up here. You can't knock it out. And, uh, down here. Guys, well, you were talking about the Big Ten. Who is the best team in the Big Ten? Ohio State? Without a doubt. The Buckeyes? Buckeyes. Do I have to answer that question? I'm going to plead the fifth on that question. You, okay. You, that's, <laughs> it's your conference, so I'm, that's why I asked. Uh -huh. I can tell you who the best team in the SEC is. That's Alabama. Yeah, Duh. without a doubt. I'll give you that answer real quick. And, and and you know, to be the king of the mountain, you gotta beat the king. So the king off the mountain. That's, that's all we got. We got one job, baby. We good. We didn't really get into the game. I had, was having computer issues. My computer finally caught up. I was able to get in here. So going back to going back to the game from last week, and because we're kind of the, the games at commercial. Yeah. And and kind of looking pre previewing Saturday night's game against Washington. Um that's an out. I, I flipped over to the MLB network and got Toronto and New York. Uh it's three two Toronto right now. Um okay. what I was really, really impressed with was Michigan's defensive adjustments. Mm -hmm. First series, Michigan goes down, scores touchdown. Uh -huh. Defense comes out, looks bad, looks out of sorts, can't seem to do anything against Western Western Rush was right down the field, scores, mm -hmm. ties the ball game up. And it was it was a very it was a very subdued atmosphere at the big house on Saturday afternoon. Right. After that touchdown. And it, it had that feeling of okay, here we go again. And um we go again. Okay. Yeah. Michigan gets the ball back, drives down the field, kicks the field goal, ten seven. Michigan. And what, what impressed me was the defense didn't have any takeaways. They didn't have any they didn't have any they didn't make any big plays. But what they did make were good plays. And they were able to make adjustments on the fly, something that I haven't seen since during in the Dan Brown era era. Was they would not make any adjustments. Dan Dan Brown was determined to just blitz on every play. Just send the house every night. All night. No, no, and, yeah, no. Uh, I mean and so what I was most impressed with, and we were talking about that Saturday, was the fact that um, they they were able to adjust and make some adjustments and and make some adjustments on the on the in the secondary. Jesus. Yeah. Another pick. Off of four oh minutes. come on! On your hands, it wasn't a hard catch. Oh, that's gonna frustrate Tom Brady really bad, really fast. But, um, yeah, I'm smart, is it? But, and then, and just being able to. And being efficient on offense, they they didn't blow any. You know, there wasn't anyone that had a wow stat line, but everybody was very very. Everybody contributed. Everybody had you know, offensive line looked good, defensive line looked good. Definitely room for improvement. Make some adjustments and get geared up for Washington this Saturday. I, I, I'm, I'll be honest with you, but I really I, I like I like their, their both quarterbacks. Yep. Uh, yep. Both quarterbacks look decent. Um, McNamara, I thought was good. Oh, yeah. McNamara was great. I can't uh, wait to see what he can do this Saturday. I hope. I, I hope McCarthy I, get. I, 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 dude. I, if, if I'm a betting man, I'm taking Michigan. If I'm a betting man, I'm yeah. The lines move to Michigan plus seven. Yeah, I'll take the points. What's the over under in the game? You know what the over under? Uh, is? I don't know that offhand. I can look it up though. Because I would, I would take the seven. I'd lay seven. Because Washington or Washington didn't look very good in no, they didn't Montana. So they have a much tight, tougher defense and a much better offense. They're coming up against this Saturday than they did last week. Uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Yeah, the line the line opened at at minus 1. Okay. I cannot find anything from today from from well, at least the Bucks went didn't let them score a touchdown this time. They're gonna go for it. Uh, the over under is fifty one. What do you think about that? Would you would you take the over there or would you take the under? Do you mm -hmm. think Michigan? Because now think about this: Michigan's gonna hold. I mean, what would you say? Is it gonna be like 28-14, 28-35-7? How would you how would you see that game playing out? Okay, I, we can do it this time. So 51 to get to 51, you're looking at 30. Is good. 28, 28, 24 would get you. Would that get you there? That would be 52, right? Yep, that'd be 52. <sighs> you see Michigan scoring four touchdowns and holding Washington to three, to and, three and a kick. kick. Yeah, he's yeah, yeah. I would I would take the over. I think it's gonna take some points for Michigan to beat to beat. Mm -hmm. yes. Washington, especially especially plus seven, going or six and a half. Uh, the lines the lines shifted dramatically. Yeah, it's, it's Michigan minus six. So okay, uh, I don't know if Michigan will cover. I like Michigan. Oh, God, I want Michigan to win. Don't get me wrong, but so I don't you, know. If, you would take you would take Washington. I'd take Michigan straight up. I would I would not I wouldn't take the points. Um, especially you know, to get to fifty two. Um, you're looking at, at, at one, at a minimum of 28, 24. Um, it's supposed to, as far as I know, it's supposed to be nice Saturday night in Ann Arbor. I'll look at that real quick. I don't think weather will be a factor. You guys had, well, you guys had two, two home games to start the season. Yeah. Back to back home games to start the season. And it's a, it's an eight o'clock kick. So it's, you're looking at, uh, da -da -da -da, Saturday. I want the hour. It's not giving me the hourly. So the sun sets just before kickoff. Um, kind of gusty, 10 to 20 mile an hour winds, but I don't think That's it'll be really. Return. Good job. The, the really 10, 20 mile an hour winds probably be, probably be negligible on the field. Mm -hmm. uh, at field level, that will probably be negligible. Um. I, I think uh, it depends on whether we can run the ball. If we can run the ball against against if uh, Corum and Haskins can have a good a good day on the ground and 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 McNamara doesn't have to try and air it out, and especially with losing Ronnie Bell for the season, um, and 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 we can just we can run the ball, control the clock, keep the keep Washington's offense off the field, which is their um, is their strength. I think that. Um, well, I think I think we talked, but I think uh, I think that I think over battle, and you can get the team off the field on third down. You're going to win games. That's the way it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. pro and yeah. In college football. It, you win the turnover battle. I, I just can't see Wisconsin third down. So. I can't see Washington um, yes. playing fight two weeks in a row. That was quick. That was a quick touchdown pass. Oh, he had wide open. All he had to do was hit him. Damn. Uh, yeah, I mean, well, here's the thing. But okay, so you had you had Wisconsin lose, and I know they're they're highly touted it, and Penn State won. Now there's a team, there's a coach right there that do you think he's on the hot seat if Penn State doesn't do very well? No, uh, James Franklin. Okay, no. No, he was Owen. He was Owen eleven against top twenty teams la until last week. So I think Franklin. I think Franklin's fine in Penn State. Okay. I, I still, to me, I th I thought that 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 was the best game of the weekend was the Wisconsin Penn State game because I watched that game. Yeah, part of that game at noon. I I really again I, I, again you're talking to an SEC hyper here. I love that football game. I think the big that was that was the classic Big Ten game, defense. That was, yeah, that yeah. Was exactly what Big Ten football. I've I've always known Big Ten football to be 
is defense. And occasionally you'll get a big play or something along those lines that gets you the scores that you need. But at the end of the day, if your defense can cause turnovers, and that's what Penn State did, they got three, was it three interceptions, I think? Yeah. Yeah. That Scott yeah. the quarterback through. So there you go. I mean, and they had they had issues with uh fumbling with the running back and the center exchange. So Wisconsin's got some some stuff they gotta improve on during the break. You know, I, I like I like what uh Aiden Hutchinson said, you know. Uh, we haven't we haven't done a damn thing. We're all moved on and we're ready for Washington. We're not content with this at all. You know, if that's the mentality they can carry through the rest of the year, and 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 it can, you know, it showed on the field on Saturday. Like I said, like I said at the top of this discussion, you know, we 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 looked so much better on defense after the first series, where in years past it would just be doing the same thing over and over and over again, and and and, and then Don Brown goes to Arizona. And Arizona gets beat twenty four to sixteen. Three tenths of a second. Is that the same three tenths of a second? When he was a rookie playing for the Patriots. Yeah. He was always quick in, in, in I mean, I was asking my dad what he thought about, you know, Tom Brady if he had gone somewhere else. And I just picked the team and I was thinking, would Tom Brady still be Tom Brady if he had gone to Minnesota in 2000 instead of going to New England? If he had gone to the third round to say Minnesota, you know, would, would Tom Brady still be Tom Brady? Or was it the perfect storm where Tom Brady ends up in New England and he ends up with Bill Belichick? Does Tom Brady, you know, let's say, let's say Tom Brady played all four years and was a starter every day at Michigan and had, had that pedigree and, and, and was the quarterback of record in 97 when they won the, when they won the title. And, um, and he didn't have to compete with Drew Henson because they were so afraid of losing Drew Henson. Would Tom Brady still be Tom Brady? And, 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 you know, that to me is the biggest what if of, of, Tom Brady's career was would Tom Brady still be Tom Brady if he wasn't in New, if he hadn't have gone to New England if he hadn't have been a six round pick pick if he hadn't have had that mass I mean you could have built a house with the chip that Tom Brady had on his shoulder yeah you you probably could have bought a, you could probably build a city block from the chip that was on Tom Brady's shoulder when he got to New England in two thousand with yeah. everything he had to prove yep and. You know, was it was it was it Brady? How much was Brady? How much was Belichick? I mean, look at <coughs> yeah. Well, we're gonna we're gonna find out more this year with uh, because we Belichick. we'll see you now. I mean, again, they're gonna they're leaning a lot on Mac, and I, you know, I I like Mac Jones. I mean, again, right. I didn't like him when he played in college. Me too. He beat the Gators in the SEC championship yeah. game, but. Um, but no, I mean, I, I really like Mac. I think obviously the one thing is without any rookie quarterback, you got to make sure you don't get him hit because, you know. Yeah. Can you protect him? Issues as Jacksonville does or Cincinnati does. So we're okay with No, I, I think I think the New England offensive line is better than both of those teams. Yeah, I agree. I, I also think that right. you have better coaching in New England than you do in. Oh, yeah. In, in, in either one of those places. Jacksonville and yeah. And yeah. I, I did I you know I was I I I I said I don't even remember who it was that was already ready to burn Nick Saban or Urban Meyer to the ground. I forget who it was. Of course no it was Paul Feinbaum, wasn't it? Who was just absolutely ripping Urban Meyer before they had even taken a snap in the preseason. So I, I I, yeah. As much as I hate Nick uh, um, Urban Meyer, yeah. and I'm just gonna pump the hate breaks a little bit here, and um, um, and I'm all for piling on Urban Meyer. I mean, you know, I can't stand the SOV, but uh, yeah. I, I want I want a larger sample size than three meaningless games. 
you know, let's be honest, the preseason doesn't mean anything. No, you know, it's it's fine for a roster spot. It's a it's a glorified yeah. workout. You know, it's a glorified workout. Let's let's get mm-hmm. to the um, let, let's get four or five six games in, and and we'll see where where what Jacksonville looks like. Yeah, what does Jacksonville look like? I mean. Because look, I was telling you uh, on Saturday when we were watching, or no, it was last Thursday because we were we were on this show and we had the USF game on, or I did because you didn't have a chance to watch because it was on the ACC network. But um, we were watching that. Was was telling you that um, I'm gonna I'm not gonna be able to remember his name because I always get him confused what? with the guy in, guy in Nebraska. Oh, you're talking about um, uh, Frost, Scott Frost. Is it Scott Frost that's in? It is Scott Frost. Who's in Nebraska. who's in Nebraska? Scott Frost is in Nebraska. Okay, and who who's at USF? Uh, Jeff Scott. Jeff Scott. Okay, I get the. Oh. Anyway, um, and, and watching the first couple of series at the, in the USF game, the offense just looked like they didn't have it together. Right. And and you know again, like I said, you know it's too early to tell. We're one game in. It, it, you know. Played it, you know. You, you know, UNC is going to be tough. You know, Florida is going to be tough. You know that you can't make any mistakes. You can't have any problems. But the play calling was suspect in the first couple of series. Uh, I didn't. I kind of got into other games. Got in the show. We, I didn't really go back to it and watch a lot of the later game mm-hmm. because it turned into a blowout pretty early. Mm-hmm. And, and so, um, you know, and and that's what I have to say about her. You know, that's what I'm. You know, my my thinking about Urban Myers. Let's see what can. How can he? Can he coach them up? Do they, do they, you know, are they making, are they just missing plays? Or, you know, how much is it Urban Meyer and how much is it just a lack of um, quality personnel? You know, because everywhere Urban Meyer's gone, he's been successful. Yes. Whether it was Utah, it was at Bowling Green, Utah, Florida, Ohio State, wherever he's gone, he's been successful, especially in the college ranks. And, you know, it's not fair to give him. You know, to to say he's gonna suck or he stinks or he's terrible, doesn't have any idea what he's doing. Um, you know, when he hasn't had a chance to do anything yet. Right. You know, you gotta give him time to be able to. You know, the NFL is a whole another beast. I mean, you know, I saw mm-hmm. talking about we were talking about that earlier about the just an animal of another stripe. Mm-hmm. You know, the NFL, <clears throat> the learning curve. And unfortunately for Urban Meyer, I think he's in his fifties or sixties. I, I want to say he's like he's in 58? his 60. 60, 62 is the first number that came to my mind. Yeah. Um. So exact. He's he's not he's not exactly a a young guy, you know. Yeah. And and neither am I. And and you know. Oh, okay. They knocked it away. Um. And, and so um. And I thought you were like what, twenty eight, twenty nine, somewhere in there. Fifty one. <laughs> no, I'm fifty one, really. Uh, <laughs> flattery, uh-huh. flattery will get you everywhere with me. Mm, right. <laughs> <laughs> but no, you know, and that's kind of where you know, it's kind of what my thoughts on Urban Meyer and looking for, looking ahead to the. The season and and you know are they going to be able you know are they going to be competitive or you know and and not not necessarily winning games but putting showing signs that they that they that they they can play football and they don't have both their shoes tied together is my going to be my biggest problem my biggest takeaway from this from the um early part of the season for Jacksonville is not. Wins and losses don't matter. They can be zero and they can be four, zero and five, zero and six. That's fine. I'm not worried about that. How are they getting beat? Is my question. Are they getting blown out forty-eight to three every week, or are they putting together ball games where they're close in the fourth quarter and it's thirty-four seventeen and they were down by seven with eight minutes to go in the third quarter or fourth quarter? Right. You know, where, where it was just a play or two that the offense made or that the opponent, the opposing team made. You know. Is it Trevor? You know, is Trevor Lawrence making bad reads right. early in the mm-hmm. season? You know, is it is it just growing pain? You know, and there's a lot. There's going to be a lot of growing pains in Jacksonville. Oh yeah, are there always? Absolutely. You know, and and so so to hate on, and 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 again, I hate Nick. I hate Urban Meyer. 
So I have no problem hating on Urban Meyer. And this is this is a Michigan guy saying this is a Michigan guy saying let's just let's just be yes. a little bit patient. I I'm gonna say this, but I, I I when I came out like when I was doing my my Friday show when the season the schedule came out, I said I could see Jacksonville winning four to five games. Yeah, yeah, I really yeah. could. They they have the ability to do that. Obviously, hey, hey, priority number hey, one hey. is to protect Trevor Lawrence. That's yeah, the number one priority. So, and that's that's going to be the thing is that can they protect? Um. So they they open up against Jacksonville, or they open up against Jacksonville. They're playing themselves in week one, apparently. Um. So obviously they're going to lose. Um. They open up against Houston in Houston, and they come home for a game against Denver. Um. They go. And they got back to back home games against Denver and, and Arizona. And then they have a, and then they go to uh, Cincinnati on a Thursday night. Um, just looking at the first four games, um, Texans are a winnable game. Texans are in disarray. That's a winnable game. Denver, Denver should be close, competitive game. I don't know if they'll win or not. I like Teddy Bridgewater. I've been high on Teddy Bridgewater for ten, <laughs> ten years now. I really hope he can get it figured out in in Denver. And then Arizona, Arizona's. This question. Arizona's gonna be Arizona's the toughest toughest game in the first four. I don't think they'll beat Arizona. Looking to the next week, they got they gotta go to Cincinnati on a Thursday night. That's gonna be that's gonna be that's gonna suck. That's gonna be tough. Um well, and, and again we'll see where the Bengals are after week three. Are they you know, how no. do they and then that'll gauge so then the next four games they get the Titans at home, that's a loss. The Dolphins at home, that should be competitive, but I think that's going to be a loss. Then they got to go to Seattle, that's a loss. They get the Bills at home, that's a loss. Go to um, Indianapolis, and Indianapolis could be a winnable game, depending on how when Kyle Carson Wentz is playing. If he's right. if he's playing, right. Then they get the Jet. Then they get the Forty ers at home, that's a winnable game because of East Coast West Coast. Right. Having to have having the 49ers come in um, from the West Coast, the West Coast teams don't travel well to the East Coast. Is no, Jacksonville on East Coast? Or are they Central? Jacksonville, um, they're, they're East Coast because Jacksonville is in the middle of the state. Okay. Jacksonville's in the so we're you know, see the 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 thing is part of Florida is on the most of Florida is on the Eastern Time Zone. It's really the panhandle our, that's our panhandle on. Panhandle is, is is on central time, okay. where you oh. your time zone, Adam, where you got you're an hour behind us. So right now, I'm looking at the clock. It says 10:02. It's got to be 9:02 where you're at, right? It's 10:02. I'm on East Coast. Yeah, oh, you're on East Coast time. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. So I'm, I'm like 30 minutes from the. I'm 30 minutes from the from the from the date line. Okay, got you, got you. Okay, because Nashville's on it. I, I I can't be any right. farther. I can't be any farther west and still and still be on the east coast. I got you. Okay. Then they get the then they so the the 49ers game, I feel like that could be one, especially with having a um having a east coast team come to the to come to the having a west coast team come. He missed it again. That's from 60 yards away to that. Okay. That's uh, a tough. One. Yeah. I'll give you that one. I'll give you that one. He didn't miss it by much. No, he didn't. He almost hit the crossbar. That was Greg Zerland's one of the best kickers like in the hockey, league. That's like a hockey player. Yeah. Oh, he hit the crossbar. Then they got the Falcons. That should be a loss. We'll see where the Falcons no, are. Uh, the Rams, they got to go to. Um, yeah, they won't beat the Rams. Not in no. Then, then, they go, then they go to, Indi- uh, to Tennessee. Won't beat Tennessee. Then they get the Jack. Then they get Houston at home. They'll win that. I, I, think, I think they then, win. They beat Houston both times. Both games. I agree. Then they go to New York to play the Jets the day after Christmas. Mm, nope. That's an iffy game too because it depends on how the Jets are doing by that time of the year. Yeah. Is yeah. Zach Wilson doing well. Is the defense playing well? I mean, yeah. We'll, yeah. We'll have to see how that. Uh, then they then they then they head to 
They head to New England to um and they gotta go to New England in just in January. That's gonna be a tough game. Yeah. January second, the day after New Year's. New Year's. Yes. That's gonna be a that's gonna be a slugfest. And there's yeah. one more game after that. And then they gotta then they get the Colts at home. Uh to close out the regular season. Uh yeah, so it, I could see five, six, seven, eight wins in there. Not out of the realm of possibility. Okay. Yeah. Um. Uh, again, and then you know, and, and more than you know, I, like I said, it's it's not just about winning and losing. It's about how you're winning or losing. Mm-hmm. Are they you know? Are they losing? Are they are they one, two, three? You know, is it a touchdown, two touchdowns, three? Touch- are they just getting absolutely handled, or are they are they playing competitively? Right. Mm-hmm. That's the that's gonna be the that's got that's gonna be your biggest that's those are gonna be your biggest questions going into the regular season. Or, or, or going through the regular season is how you're losing. Well, I mean, not to not to change leagues on you, but that's what I, you know, again, I, I know right no, now. I know right now that. Oh, geez, that, look at this. That oh, USF, wow. USF is not going to win on Saturday. But if no. they right. get a touchdown and they or can two. in competitive. In, in a meaningful, wild, in a, in. Right, early. Yeah, I mean that. That's the thing. That's the thing. Are they? Can they make it competitive? Is is the question. early? Can they because, keep it competitive early? Let's say okay. Let's say for example that they win the coin toss, and if right. they defer, I think that's a mistake. They're going to be down defer. seven nothing. You don't. You don't defer right. after you got shut out forty-five nothing a week ago. Right. You take the ball. Right. You go ahead and march say, down okay, the field. We got to get points. We got to get at least. Yeah, you have to get three. You have to get. You have to get three. Exactly. <coughs> so, <coughs> I, I, you know, we'll see. I mean, like I said, I'm going to be there. Um, right. I'm. I, I really this this. When I got, you know, I was again. We talked about this, you know. I said I was worried. I hadn't heard anything. I'm like, oh, maybe I didn't get credentials this year, right? So right. I was even looking up um, ticket prices to go to the games. Okay, I saw tickets in the nosebleed section, for like thirty five bucks. I'm like, okay, I'll pay thirty five dollars, right? Yeah, maybe, maybe I'll Uber right. over there. I'll let someone drive me to and from the stadium. But then when I got credentials, I'm like, this is the one game that I was really looking forward to going to, right? see them play yeah. Florida because now I'm going to see the Gators twice this year in person here and then I'm going to go to Gainesville obviously in November when they play Florida. Right. Right. But, um, so I was I'm really looking forward <laughs> to the game. Like I said, I don't think USF is going to be competitive in this game. No. The, the next game is against FAMU. They'll win that game. And I think the BYU game is going to be a lot closer than a lot of people think it's going to be. Yeah. yeah. I think USF might, if if how they play against Florida, how they play against FAMU, will determine what kind of team we're going to see. Will dictate the rest of the season in Week Four. Yeah, right. And conference, then you have conference. Yeah, I think I think how they play against Florida will. I think how they play against Florida will dictate how the rest of the season goes. I agree. I agree. So do I. Um, I, you guys want to call it a show? Uh, I was willing to stay for the whole game if y'all are. Yeah. Well, that's okay. That's fine. Yeah, we can keep it going. I'm going to be eating All here right. in a few minutes. So I just thought okay, I would throw that out there. But, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's halftime. I'm good with that. I was, I was game to stay for the whole game if you're game for to stay yeah. for the whole game. I may I, fall I asleep. Yeah. I don't have to be up early in the morning this Friday. So neither, neither do I. Neither do I. That's why I'm game to stay for the whole game. If I had to work, I would, yeah, I would beg off and head to bed. But I'm game to stay for the whole game. So I'm I may fall. Yeah, I'm here in a few minutes. So that's why I thought. I, okay, that's fine with me. I don't care. Oh, you know, I fix the screen. My screen is all this stuff. My freaking screen. screen. I'm just checking a few scores here. Yeah, I've just been flipping around because it's halftime. Um, but no, no I'm putting scores for my sites. Well, actually, you know what? Why don't we? Why don't we look at the NFL schedule this week? Yeah, so yeah, that's kind of what I was kind of. I don't think we really of, talked about the games that are coming up this weekend. No, no, we haven't kicked in. We talked a little bit about week one because we looked at the uh, Jacksonville. And Jacksonville. We'll... So let's look at the uh, the games this Sunday. And then, of course, Monday night, obviously, because we will have yeah. Monday night football. 
Um, or actually, there's two games on Monday Night Football this week. Um, so we have. No, this is one. We got. Okay, so this game's going yeah. right now. So we obviously talked about Jacksonville and and Houston. Right. right. We have L.A. The Chargers at Washington at FedEx Field. Mm. Uh-huh. So you got you got the offensive rookie of the year versus the defensive rookie of the year. Correct. Oh, okay. Correct. Justin Herbert and Chase Young. Yeah, it's um, an interesting have, matchup. I I I'm gonna go. I, I like L.A. I do. I agree. How Justin Hubert does. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, I'm not, and again, I'm not dogging. Washington, I think they're going to win the NFC East. I think Possibly. there's a better team in the, out of the four in that division. Um, yes. But we'll see. Um, but I, I, I like L.A., to be honest. I do, too. I do like L.A. I do, too. Yeah. Uh, the next game, guys, is Seattle at Indianapolis. Again, we were just talking about Carson Wentz. Yes, we were. Mm-hmm. The Indianapolis Colts have a good defense. The Seahawks have a bad offensive line. I don't know which way to go on that one. I don't know. I guess it depends on the Seattle mm. have enough defense. Seattle has to travel to the east. Ha- Seattle, Seattle has to go to Indy. Correct. And those They're are always in tough. Yeah. Yep. They're playing in- the West Coast does not travel well to the and I, I know I know Indianapolis is in central, but still the the yeah. it's such a tough it's tough to travel mm-hmm. two and a half time zones across the country. Well, I, I, it says um, right here, but it says that Seattle is eleven and one in the last twelve games, starting at ten a.m. Eastern time. Mm. There you go. That's okay, rough. this is kind of the the money lines on week one are okay. So we'll um because they don't have them. Excuse me. So they have Washington at a minus one. Dang it! The over again. Washington's a minus one. And Seattle's, yeah, Washington's at minus one. Yeah. Seattle's uh, two and a half. And they don't have the over under. Okay. Uh, FanDuel's got them at three. Yeah, so I'm just, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna do DraftKings. I'm just gonna use the DraftKings. <clears throat> so where are we going next? The next buddy would be uh, Jets at Carolina. Jets. Okay. Mm-hmm. Jets at Carolina. It's four and a, it's four to the uh, it's Carolina minus four. Wow. I, ooh, I, I, ooh, I think Would you take Carolina? Carol? I've not. Yeah. I, I I think I'd take the Jets in that situation. I take that's gonna that to me is I think the most intriguing matchup of, of week one is yeah. is, oh, no is Sam, Sam Darnold Sam Darnold versus Zach Wilson. Yep. Um, I I like Carolina. Uh, I think Sam Darnold plays with a little bit of extra energy on Saturday on Sunday, mm. wanting some revenge against the team that got rid of him. Do you think that McCaffrey plays with? You know the team that that didn't that. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think I think McCaffrey. I think that McCa- that Darnold has a more has a better supporting cast than than Wilson does at this point. Okay. And, and I think it comes down to the defense. Which defense plays better? Can, yeah. can Carolina replace Luke Keekley? I mean, obviously you can't replace Luke no, Keekley, so. but who steps up to take over that leadership role and, and fills that void? And, and can they can they find someone to fill that void? Right, right, right. Uh, the next one, guys, would be Minnesota traveling to Cincinnati. Yeah. Uh, Minnesota minus three. I take the Vikings and the points. Take the Vikings. Take, yeah. yeah. I take the Vikings and the points, definitely. I, I think uh, Dalvin Cook's going to feast. Dalvin yeah. Cook's going to feast. Yeah. Uh, Dalvin Cook eats all game. That 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 Cincinnati run defense, they don't have stand a chance against against Minnesota. As long as Cook stays healthy. Um, the next one, guys, is Arizona at Tennessee. It's Tennessee minus three. I Tennessee. Think- and I like the Titans and the points. Yeah. I don't think it'll be that close. I I would take Tennessee plus five or minus five. I would I would move that. I I think Tennessee's I think Tennessee's more than gonna cover. Uh, the next one uh, next one is San Francisco at Detroit. 
Uh, San Francisco minus eight. I take the Lions, and I don't think San Francisco is going to beat them by eight points. You take the Lions to cover, but San Francisco to win? Correct. I take San Francisco to win, but I don't think they'll cover the spread. Uh, I agree. Uh, I think I I think them I think that I think that 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 is because um the other so every other um, oh, wow point, points bets got them minus nine mm. and um MGM's got them at minus seven okay. or seven and a half um I'll give you yeah I'll, and one more I'm looking I just I don't I think that's too much I think San Francisco uh, minus four right. I I would be much more comfortable at a minus four. Again, it's that same issue that we're having with several of the other early ga- early games this week is um, coming from west to east. And Detroit's yeah. not a good team. Detroit's Let's not mince any words here. Um, they got a rookie head coach who's all bluster, talks a lot of talks real good, wins a lot of press conferences, but yet hasn't proved it on the field. And they didn't look good in preseason. As much as I say the preseason doesn't matter. That's one. That's one area where I think the the preseason does matter, is with a rookie head coach. Mm-hmm. Okay, where are we going next? Uh, the next one, guys, would be Pittsburgh at Buffalo. That's uh, ne- that's uh, Pitts- Buffalo mm-hmm. minus six and a half. Ooh, I want Buffalo and the points. I want Buffalo I, and I, all I, the points. Okay. I, I I want Buffalo minus ten. I, I think Buffalo is going to absolutely sure. smash Pittsburgh. Okay. In Buffalo. In yeah. Buffalo, week one, with a, with a, the they're going to be rocking the 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 Bills Mafia. They haven't had anything to celebrate in thirty years. They right. that that's that's not that is going to be the uh, it's going to be the most hostile environment Buffalo has ever ever had. And they and 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 getting Pittsburgh, a, a hated conference rival. Yeah. Oh yeah, Buffalo big. Uh, the next one uh, would be the Eagles and the Falcons in Atlanta. Uh, minus three, Atlanta. I don't yes. like that. No, I don't like that. I, I think I think the Eagles win. I was gonna say I think yes, yes, they'll win. I don't know why they have Atlanta favored. That's a very good question. That's that. Yeah, that. You know, I don't get that either. I don't know how how they have Atlanta winning that game. No, I, I don't know either. Wow. Okay. Um, I think this is, <clears throat> excuse me, the game of the week. Um, Cleveland at Kansas City. In Cleveland, it, uh, it's KC minus five. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, real quick, because we didn't hit in it, we we talked about Jacksonville Houston before. Um, before I pulled up the uh, the, the betting lines for week one, uh, Jacksonville. Uh, we got uh, Jacksonville minus three. You take Jack. I take Jacksonville and the points. Three, Jacksonville minus three. I think Jacksonville covers. Yeah. Uh, twenty three twenty something somewhere in there. Twenty three twenty twenty seventeen seventeen fourteen. Uh, those right. are those scores are call, kind of just jumping out at me. Something okay. like that. All right. Watch us be completely wrong about everything. <laughs> you know what, dude? We're not getting paid, so it's okay to be wrong. Yeah. We can be wrong. We can right. Be wrong all the way around. Yes. And every pick we make. <laughs> right. Hey, but if we're right, if we're right, mm-hmm. if we're right, y'all have to tune and watch this show because we know something that nobody else does. does. That's correct. 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 Um, what's the uh, what's the line, bud, in the Browns Chiefs game? Um, Kansas City minus five. Ooh. Um, I'm gonna take Kansas City and the points. You take KC and the points. I take KC to cover, yes. With a minus five, I I can definitely see that be 26, 21, 31, 25, some 31, 24. Okay. okay. I, I can see Kansas City covering and, and winning. Yeah. Okay. Um the Sunday you have the Packers at, at New Orleans to play the Saints. Uh Packers minus uh three and a half. I take the Packers in the points. Yeah, I agree. Mm-hmm. I think I think that the def- I think that Packers defense is gonna be serving up, serving up turnovers all night. Mm-hmm. Uh, next- New Orleans better get them ovens hot because because famous Jameis yeah. is turning is serving up some turnovers, man. Get Almighty, he's gonna turn in a lot of mm-hmm. uh, uh, apple turnovers, cherry turnovers, <laughs> interceptions, fumbles. 
Well, think about this, guys. His first pass is a Buccaneer, and his last pass is a Buccaneer were both pick sixes. So, yep. You know, mm. that way. So he threw one pass last year for for um, New Orleans, yep. and that was was that against Tampa? It was. Yeah, thank you. Correct, Chris, trick, say, correct me if I'm wrong. Play. Yeah, yeah, that trick play. play. Yep. Trick I mean, play. it just fooled every. It fooled me, man. Fooled everybody. I was like totally, totally lost. Yep. I mean, the dude's got a cannon for an arm. Right. He's got an absolute cannon for an arm. And 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 I I, I think a lot about Tom, uh, Brett Favre, and 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 being reckless. You know, he's got an absolute cannon for an arm. He can fit a ball in any window, but it's so. But he throws it so damn hard. Mm-hmm. Then it makes it hard to catch. Are you eating something hot? No, that was Caesar salad. It's very good. No, that's I just yeah no I just got to roll a lot of Caesar dressing. Caesar? Sorry. Ah, no, it looked like you had, like you like you had hot wings or something. No, I was no. I'm, it's 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 sour tasting, and I'm just trying to shake my head, ah. trying to get that taste out of my mouth. Okay. Um, Yuck. Having my roommate, who's great cook. Made mushroom and Swiss burger and Caesar oh, salad. So, reading nice. health. Um, it's uh, basically it's arugula with um, with a uh, Dijon mustard, um, sherry vinegar, oil, salt, and pepper. That's good. Thanks. Nice, nice. Okay, so then we have uh, Miami, New England. Is that the next one? Um, next one, buddy. I have is um, is not the same thing with the Giants. Oh, Broncos at Giants. Uh, they got Denver minus three in New in in New in New in New York. They have they have Denver winning. Broncos in the points. Yeah, I think the uh, I that all depends on one thing. Twenty six. I'm gonna give you one number. Oh, Barkley. Twenty six. Yes. Which is can Saquon come back from the injury? I I take Denver. I think uh, I. Bud, so I, mean, I take Denver. I I take new. I take I'll take Denver, but they won't cover. Okay. Okay. All right. Like 24, 22, 24, uh, 20, 28, 20, 27, something like that. Yeah. Okay. Um. Then the next game, buddy, is Miami at New England at in Gillette Stadium. And they have New England minus three. Yep, I'll take the Patriots and the points. Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking. That's kind of that's universal across the board. Yeah. Uh, the next game is the Sunday night game, Chicago at Los Angeles, and that's the Rams. Minus minus seven, LA minus seven and a half. Uh yeah. I I'll take I'll take the Rams and the points. Yep, me too. And then the Monday night. The Monday night game uh, is Baltimore at Las Vegas. And they have Baltimore minus three and a half. I'll take the Ravens at points. And I've seen it. They've got several, a couple. Uh, do, 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 do. FanDuel has a Baltimore at minus four and a half. Do you, mm. do you like the three and a half or are you willing to go four and a half? Three. You put Perfect. the fan. I was and DraftKings has them at three and a half. Buff. Three and a half? Um, yeah, uh, DraftKings has them at three and a half. Caesar has them at four and a half, four, and FanDuel has them at four and a half. I'd say Baltimore all the way around on all of those, even if I have them at yeah. minus. Baltimore's got way too good of a defense, and I know Lamar Jackson's a question mark. You know, but still, yeah. they. I mean, I know they're hurt at they're dinged up at the running back position, but the the Raiders, like you, we were just talking earlier. How about an enigma? John Gruden is. I mean, yeah, yeah. John Gruden's an enigma, so we'll see That's an, how that goes for the Raiders this year. Well, yeah. real, real, real quick to run through the uh, uh, so the opening spread: uh, Tampa Bay at Baltimore, De- Dallas at Tampa. Opened at six and a, six, moved to nine and a half. Mm-hmm. Eagles at Falcons open at Falcons minus three, moved to three and a half for the Falcons. Jaguars at Texans uh, started with the Jaguars at minus two, moved to minus three. Washington started at one and a half, moved down to one. The Titans started at two and a half, moved up to three. The Colts started at minus uh, one and a half, 
moved uh, moved over to Seattle uh, minus two and a half. Buffalo open at four and a, uh, four and a half, moved to six and a half. Okay. The Niners started at six and a half, moved to eight. The Vikings started at two and a half, moved to three. The Panthers started at four and a half, moved to four. The Packers started at one, moved to minus three and a half. The Patriots started at two and a half, moved to three. The Broncos started at minus one, moved to three. Uh, the Chiefs started at uh, minus six and a half, moved to five. The Rams opened at six and moved to um, seven and a half. And the Ravens opened at four and a half and moved to five. Okay. And that was all That was all DraftKings, so... I'm not sponsored, so I'm just <laughs> not not a sponsor. Yeah. Not a sponsor. <laughs> but call me. Call me. <laughs> yeah, hell yeah. All day. Uh, I don't I don't bet because I don't I don't I can't stand again, you know, talking about winning and losing. I can't stand losing and I don't have the kind of money to put to I don't have that kind of money to lose. Yeah, I agree with you. Um I would I would I would say the most compelling matchups of week one. Um, let me pull that back up real quick. Uh, the most interesting matchups, I think, are Packers at Saints. Uh, it's got to be really, really interesting. Um, I'm looking forward to all the rookie quarterbacks, seeing what they can do, the ones that are starting. Um, Washington and the, and, um, the Chargers are one I want to keep an eye on. Because okay. um, I just think that's going to be an, I think that's going to be a good game. Uh, the Panthers, Jets, the one we talked about to kick off this segment. Yeah, Darnold back against his old team. Yeah, <laughs> facing off the guy that facing off against the guy that replaced him. Yep. Ooh. Okay. Pick it up. Dallas has given New England. Uh, Dallas has given Tampa Bay fits early. You know. Yes. Yeah. Sure are. The defense is not as good as I think a lot of people thought it was going to be. And it's not. And Dax played really well. Yes, you have. They haven't really had to rely on Zeke. And Dax played really well. They've they've been able to handle Zeke. I haven't seen Zeke. Yeah, Zeke, Zeke hasn't had, but but oh. but Dak has been more than made up for it. And the defense right. is playing soft coverage. I'm I'm not digging on that soft coverage that they're playing. Well, ooh think, ooh but- ooh oh. I think with Sean Murphy bunting out of the game, I think that hurts him a little bit. It hurts them a, lo- a little bit? Yeah. That's the understatement of the century right there. It hurts them a shit ton. Yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, they have Jamel Dean, which, again, is not the greatest replacement. And then I mean, yeah. Jordan Whitehead is out. Whitehead's out, mm. hurt. And he, had he not been hurt, they may not be in the position that they're in right now. Yeah, yeah, that, that yeah. Missing a key guy well, never hurt, never the helps. The defensive so, line isn't really making. Oh, there's a, probably a pass interference right there. Probably. Flag. Three one. Yeah, it's a back judge that threw it. Mm-hmm. That's a spot foul too, right? Yep. Yeah. The. You know they were kicking around the idea. They've been kicking around the idea for a while, yes. making that just a fifteen yarder. And the reason I don't, I don't think it should be a fifteen yarder. I think it should be a spot foul. I don't like in the college game that it's only a fifteen yard penalty. Um, because you know if you get beat over the top, if a guy's got to step on you in in college ball, you just want to just reach on and grab him. Right. Because you're only giving up fifteen instead of giving up 30, 40, 50 yards and a touchdown. You're you're only going to give up 15 yards. I mean, right. And and unless they're inside, unless they're inside the 15, unless they're inside, let's say you're on 35. Mm -hmm. If they're on your, if they're plus, if they're on the, if they're 35 yards or closer, you're really not giving up that much field position. You know, if a guy's streaking down the down the the sideline or down the in the middle, you know, if he's 25 or 30 yards downfield, and he's got a step on you, you might as well just reach out and grab him. Yeah, because. You only get about fifteen yards. You know, if it's if it's you know second and, and four, and um, a guy's got a step got a step on you, you might as and he's he's beat you for, um, you know, he's gonna beat you for thirty yards. 
Right. You might as well just reach out and grab it. Yeah, I agree. Because you're only going to give up 15 yards. Right, I agree. And that's why I've always felt that the call and, and that the pro penalty that is a better is a better fo- you know is a better is a better um, punishment because if a guy's got you beat by 30 yards, you know you're going to get the ball, you know, Forever, and yeah. you're you know you're interfering with him, oh. making it hard for him to catch the ball. Yeah. And a good tackle. And that's the thing that Dallas missed last year was not having Dak's ability yeah. to 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 Friend. run the ball at, from the quarterback spot. That was a big bugaboo for them last year was not having the ability to run the ball from the quarterback and the adding that wrinkle into the offense. You know, he doesn't made he hasn't run a lot, but you know, when you have that that zone read play and and the defense takes the running back Zach Zeke Zeke they 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 that's all folks. Um Dak just pulls it back and that was a mistake. He's got to play. He's got to play that more straight up. He can't go. I don't know who that was that came off of Zeke. He's got to play that more straight up. That's Shaq Barrett. Oh, Barrett. That was a. He, and that's Devin White, the guy that was chasing after him. I don't know why he turned off of uh, Zeke and let him be wide open. Come on, give me, uh, excuse me. Long way. Long way to go, though. Oh, good tackle. Wall Adams. Oh, that was a that was a brilliant open field tackle. Yep. And that was six if he doesn't make that tackle. Absolutely. Now, do you kick it or do you go for it? I, I kind of feel like it's five. Or, I mean, I feel like it's in my two. Like McCarthy's mm. thinking about that right now. But but we're so early in the game. If you don't get it, you've left three points on the field. I think True. he's gonna hit the three. I think he's gonna kick a field goal. I was gonna say he'd probably kick the field goal. It's too early. It's too early to go for it. You know, again, you know, if you kick the field goal now, right? It's, and it's nineteen. Right, and, then, two, and you can you can still win a you can still win on a field goal. If you don't yeah, get it, go. if you don't get it and, and you you're going back and forth and I and, and, and nobody and nobody scores. You have and, and and there's two, you know, you're down to the last ninety seconds with one timeout. You have to go get a touchdown. No, right. if if right. Dallas's defense can stiffen for the next, you know, thirty minutes or so, twenty five minutes, and they can put their they can put their offensive position to go down and kick a game winning field goal. Now they can go kick a game winning field goal. Yep. Right. Whereas if you yes, of course, if you get it, then all bets are off. But if you don't get it, you give new you give Tampa Bay all that momentum. Right. Yeah, that's something you don't want to do. And give Tom Brady that that chance. You know, he's a shark. I he smells blood in the water. He's Tom he's gonna he's Brady. he he's gonna if he smells blood in the water. He's he's gonna go for it. Yeah, never get Brady uh, satisfaction. He's uh, no, and, and you give him any time left on the clock, he's basically got. It's gonna make you pay for it. Well, I meant so far early, 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 early in the second half. If you give Brady a chance to go down right, and right. make it a, let's see, a sixteen and make it a twelve point game. If you don't get it, Brady goes down and Brady gets a chance to go down and make it a make it a two score game. Oh, man. You know, even if they kick a field goal. So if they kick a field goal, you go down. You know, say you don't get it, and it's 16-21. They go down and kick a field goal, make it 24-16. Now, the next time you score, you have to get the two point to, to tie. You have to get the two points to tie. Yeah, right. Now, if they go down and score, it makes it a nine-point game, which makes – I mean, now you need – of course, you still need – but if they go down and kick a field goal, it only makes it a five-point game. You can still go down – you can still take the lead with a touchdown – and then you can decide whether you want to go for two and try and make it a three point game. Right. It's too. It's too. I don't like going for two. I don't like going for it um, before yeah, five minutes of the fourth, unless you're unless you're like literally on the one, and all you need is is a half inch. I get it. I, I think I think you're chasing points at that point. Oh, speaking to John Madden. Mm. 
He called that first Brady uh, Brady Super Bowl. I, I remember um, watching a uh, watching one of those uh, NFL Network specials, right? About um, their first Super Bowl, and and you know, um, their Brady. Uh, but Bledsoe and Brady and Belichick are all standing around on the sideline before the kickoff, and they're just they're talking, and. Um, uh, Bledsoe walks over to Brady, and I can say this because it's a quote. I'm quoting here. He just walked over, uh, uh, Bledsoe walked over to Brady and said, fuck it, sling it. And uh, they just did that. And they went down there. Brady made a handful of good throws, got him in field goal range, and Vinatieri did the rest. Yeah. And, and, and it was funny watching that and listening to John Madden. John Madden, he's a rookie quarterback, you know, or a second-year quarterback, not a lot of – not a lot of starts, and um, it's just you know, it's just take it and go to overtime. Yeah, take the air out of the ball and go to overtime. <laughs> hmm. uh, and against the greatest show on turf. Yeah. A yeah. a the indie defense had been playing. Or the New England defense had been playing what well, well, but but. And the Rams have finally figured it out on offense and were gelling and they were three hundred starts, man. This is uh Tom Streener three hundredth career start. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's insane. How are we doing well on pizza? Drop, and and that goes back. And this is exactly what I was talking about. You got New England, or you got Tampa Bay in a third, third and ten. You, it's a two point game. It, you know, and uh, Godwin's been the more target. Why Smart quarterbacks do that? Oh, we're going to call attentional grounding. Matt, Dallas's defense has played well. They're getting. Exactly what I was talking about. Exactly. Now you have a chance to go down and let's see if you get the seven fixed. <clears throat> yeah, that was a good hold. Ah, uh, sometimes offensive linemen have to do that. That's just and worse. So that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that was a good hold. That was a good hold. Thankfully, it wasn't. Thankfully, it didn't blow up a big play. Right. Do it again. Do it again. Yeah. <laughs> Another uh, offside penalty. <laughs> yes. <laughs> You would like that, wouldn't you? I would. <laughs> Good run. Lamb. They got Lamb back there returning punts now, huh? Yep. A good return. What, 15 yards? Still a long way to go in this one. Yep. Yeah. Looking forward to this movie. Yeah, I am too. I love Woody Harrelson. Carnage. 
Winnie Harrelson was an inspired choice for Carnage. Yep. I agree. I, and I, I like Tom Hardy as, as Venom. Yeah. Tom Hardy was Bane, for crying out loud, man. Yeah, I know. He was great as Bane, too. <laughs> He's been on both uh, both sides of the comic book world. Yeah, He's yeah. Horrible. Right. Yeah. Blue Jays swept the Yankees. Oh, dear. Did they really? Yuck. I'm surprised the Yankees came back as when when we were when we were talking at the All Star break um, a couple months ago. Oh shit, it's been a couple months now, hasn't it? <laughs> um, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't think the Yankees were gonna get we're gonna get near oh, anywhere close to the to the wild card. Jays are up six to four in the bottom of the ninth inning, or did that go final? Just went it final. Like, just went sounds final. Like he just went final. I think, Yankees, the, I think the Jays have what? Aren't they tied for half game back? Third spot, or are they half game back? Half game back. I just flipped it over to um MLB Network. Okay. So it, right now it's looking like the AL, AL East is going to send three teams to the playoffs: Boston, Toronto, and Tampa Bay. The Boston, uh, Toronto, Boston. New yeah, yeah, New York. Uh, Tampa Bay, Boston, New York right now. That's how it sits with the Toronto half game back. Yeah. Well, you see that Toronto's won seven of their last seven games. Yankees really? Five in a row. So there you go. That's why. Yeah. Well, I didn't think that the Yankees were going to even get this close. Well, they didn't they win no. like 13 games in a row? Yes, yeah, Something they did. like that, yeah. Yeah. When we were talking at the All-Star break, we were talking about that Yankees-Red Sox series. And then it was going to be a, a crucial series, and they didn't and they didn't play well. No, the Reds um, haven't played very well since the All Star break either. So, well, New they York weren't playing. New, New York wasn't playing well going into the All Star break. Um, Intercepted. I thought that for sure. I thought flag. for sure. They, I mean, the flag on the return. Yeah. Carl yes. Smith. Came in late. That could be. That could be something on the the. Bucks. No, on on Dallas, for uh, maybe a face mask. I'm not sure. We'll have to see. You guys are you guys are a couple of seconds ahead of me. That came in after the return. I saw them throw it on the return. Oh, uh, looks like an illegal block in the back. Yeah, it's got to be got to be against because Mike McCarthy doesn't look too happy. I don't know how you guys end up like seven seconds ahead of me, but y'all are seven seconds ahead of me. Are you watching on HD? Uh, yeah. Is that, are you watching on standard def? No, no, no. I don't do that. No, right? Not if I don't have to. Well, I don't know why you're not getting the same time as we are. Well, I mean, I, I don't know. When the when the Lightning won their first Stanley Cup against the Stars, my buddy was on my show with me at that time, and he he was he's like, "Oh, we won." I'm like, "No, don't tell me," because on my TV they hadn't won yet. I'm like, "What are you doing?" Right. <laughs> Yeah, I that really wasn't. That. that really wasn't a great throw. Well, uh, Chris Collinsworth just said on that it was a great throw. <laughs> Collinsworth thought it was a great throw. Well, he, uh, oh. then. <laughs> uh, there's Gronk again. Anyway, I didn't think that was all that great of a throw. I thought it was high and wide, and forced Lamb to try and go up and get it. That was just not good defense on that one. Never yeah, got no. turned around. Nope. Stop on. Turned around too. Got one. Mm. 
nice little setup, but nothing doing. They didn't get the, the blocks. They didn't get good well, blocks. Well, 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 Bucks brought in Gennaro well, Bernard. I haven't even seen him on the field. Is um Brian Leftwood still the, the offensive coordinator in Tampa? Yes, sir, he is. Do you think he gets a shot next year? I think uh, what's his name gets a shot before him. Um, the defensive coordinator mm. shot before he does. I'm not. I I think Byron will get a shot down the road. I don't know if it's next year, but I could see it in the future. He. I this is only I, his second season as second. an offensive coordinator, isn't it? Uh, yeah. I I think it. Well, I think with the Bucks, I think he was an offense player with the or maybe not offense player, but he was an offensive coach with the Cardinals when Bruce was out in Arizona. I think Byron was he was, offensive coordinator in Jacksonville for a year? I don't think so. Maybe he was. I don't. I don't remember. I went to Marshall. Oh, thundering her. Oh, Gronk again. That pirate ship That's is very, thing. very, very loud. Is it? I sat yes. there for a preseason game, and I left there with no hearing. Mm. It's loud. Very loud. Now, of course, they don't use it during USF games, but it's it's very loud. Mm. Okay, so so on in 2016 he was hired by uh, Bruce Arians as an inter- uh, a coaching intern and worked with the quarterbacks. He was right. the the quarterbacks coach in 2017 under Arians. Now is it right, okay? Uh, he took the he took over in Arizona after they fired Mike McCoy, and the, as an interim. And then in in twenty eight and and after the season in twenty eighteen, Leftwich and Wilkes were both fired. And then uh, when Bruce Arians got to Tampa Bay, that's when he fi- when he hired Leftwich. And then last year they won it all. Yeah. So this is his third season as the offensive coordinator in in Tampa Bay. Yeah. And it's fourth overall. Yeah. So it actually fifth overall. 2018, 2019, 2020. Yeah. Oh, fourth. Yeah, fourth overall. Yeah. Sorry. I, I mean, I I think he might get a head coaching job someday. I just don't think. I mean, not anytime soon. Not anytime soon. Uh, That's too bad. I think he's a good coordinator. I think, like I said, I think uh, Todd Bowles will get. Well, they, they mm. signed Todd Bowles beyond Bruce Arians' contract. So many believe that Bowles is going to take over when Bruce retires or when he steps away. Right. I, think. I mean, I don't. I don't know. Right. Think about this. If Bruce steps away and Tom Brady retires, and now you have Blaine Gabbert or you have Kyle Trask. It's not going to be the same team, I mean, right? Team, they're going to be no, it's really offensive. not. They're not going to be, you know, it won't be the as same, good same team as they have now. Yeah, no. Ooh, I'm surprised that should be, that should be that probably be a heavily watched game. Uh, he's coming back to Maine U. Yeah, it's a, it's surprising the NFL didn't put New in both New York teams on Sunday night a little bit. Oh, Jets and Giants. Yeah, with with it with you know what what with everything going on this weekend. 
Yeah. And with what weekend this weekend coming up is, I'm a little surprised they didn't put one of the New York, at least one of the New York teams in a primetime game. Yeah, well, you had to be good to do that. I mean, both teams sucked last year, so. Well, but, I mean, you make, but a, you make, you make an exception. You make an exception. Make an exception. Sure, yeah. 20 years ago on Saturday, so. Yeah, I'm, I'm just a little bit surprised they didn't try to put a New York team in a marquee matchup or a primetime game. Yeah, Just a little you could, bit. You could have put Carolina and the Jets in a primetime matchup. That would have been interesting. Again, Zach, yeah. That's yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Not necessarily, you know, not necessarily New York. Just one in the New York. Not necessarily putting them together, but I'm surprised they didn't do a special, a special game. They don't. They don't play each other that often, do they? No, they don't. Once like every once every four years. years. Yeah. Every four years. Yeah. Ah, dang, ah, Zeke's. But then again, the Yankees and Mets are going to be playing a Sunday night baseball. Go figure. Yeah, that's great. Are they playing? They're playing both nights, aren't they? Three nights. No, yeah. they have sat. They're playing on Saturday on Fox, and then playing on Sunday on on ESPN. Mm-hmm. ESPN, yes, that's great. yeah, yeah. Should be that Saturday way. is going to be a Saturday is going to be an emotional game. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, you know, you were there when it all went. And, Team Lou, well, you were I, there when it all. Were you in? Were yeah. you in Jersey at the time? Yeah, I still am. Yeah, I'm a native. I mean, you were right. I probably could have moved or traveled or whatever. Um, but you were there when it all went down. And um, well, not the exact location, but yeah, I did see the image of it, which is fair enough. Yeah, well, you're what forty minutes from New York City. On a on a good day, yes. Yeah. I'm I'm sure those 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 that skyline isn't the same. Not at all. No. You know, and I, you know, being several thousand miles away, you know, it, it it wasn't really real. You know, right. It was like something out of a movie. Um, well, we oh, felt yeah, we felt horror. it here. Yeah. 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 We like, felt like, it here. Yeah, I'm sure y'all did. And, and you know, and and uh, there, you know, people up and down the eastern seaboard. You know, they all, you know, friends and family. That in New York City is only forty minutes away. It's not exactly like the time commitment of the century to, you know, to work in New York City, work in the office buildings in New York City. I mean, it's it's you know, it's the it's the financial center of 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 the country. I mean, anybody who's anybody in, in finance and business. You know, all they 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 may not they all have an office in New York. You may not always be in New York, but you have an office down downtown. You may not you may not have been in the trade centers, but you know you had friends and family that all you know. There were that was their lifeblood. Well, I mean, yeah. you think but too when you're watching the movie Trading Places, you know, you think mm. back to that because that's where they went. That was the building that they were in when you know the whole. You know, the, yeah, the yeah, went down. So you watch that movie after what happened, and you're like, Oh my god, like, whoa, those buildings aren't there anymore. Well, yeah, well they're just not there anymore. You when know? you think about there's there's well, the um, Spider Man, the original Spider Man was supposed to have him building a web in between the buildings, yes, and yeah. they they had to delay the movie a couple of weeks so they could edit it out. No, digitally, they digitally edited all not, that out. Yeah. Actually, most of that was filmed in Los Angeles. Yeah, but but they had to digitally they had to digitally alter the original the, the movie right. to remove that those scenes. Exactly, but for the most and, part, um, yeah. no, 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 no. I'm saying what I'm saying is that that those buildings, the, the twin towers, were uh, uh, such an yeah, integral exactly. part of New York life for mm-hmm. so long. Is that right. when they when they when they were attacked and when they fell. <coughs> the the um the creators of of the the first Spider-Man they thought it would be disrespectful and so they yes. edited that part out of the movie um and you know there's something you know and we don't usually delve off into other topics usually strictly sports but I think we can make an exception for this particular <laughs> weekend um but you know there's a scene in um Godzilla the 98 Godzilla when he's tromping oh, yeah. through the city and destroying it, and there's a the, the newscaster guy is the worst destruction since the terror attacks in '93, and you know, 
it's such a you know it's such a juxtaposition you know you know yeah. 93 was bad but it was no nowhere near as as bad as no. as a one and it wasn't uh, from the things that i've heard you know and and from from people that oh god um i had him dead to rights and he gets two two yards out of it but um you know that the 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 um that the um the truck bomb that the first attack if it had been six inches further to the left or the right i'm not exactly sure it would have brought the building down yes. and that's that's what i've heard um but you know as you know as the as the week goes into the weekend and we, and we reflect and we remember those that were lost and and yes. we mourn for our for our fellow countrymen who sacrificed so many innocent people sacrificed so much on that day you know and and you know not just just normal everyday people who gave it all up just just people that were just normal people who they weren't they weren't rescuers they weren't you know they weren't they were just people that worked in the building that that they hadn't they hadn't done anything they just they were just people and they had their 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 lives extinguished because of that's a, that's a touchdown right back in the game yep And, you know, as much as we enjoy football and, you know, sports in general, just to get away from it all, get away from the real world for a couple hours, you know, it, we remember, you know, that the, the, the reason that we have these things is because people are willing to, normal people, average, everyday people are willing to put themselves in harm's way. People that, you know, they didn't train for it. They didn't do this. That wasn't their job. That wasn't what they were. And yet in the, in the moment, in, the, in in a moment of crisis, so many people stepped up and did exactly what they needed to do on on that day, That's whether it be just whether it just be average, average everyday people in the buildings, or the heroes on Flight ninety three, mm-hmm. and so many people that volunteered to give blood, to donate their time to go down and help with the recovery efforts, the rescue efforts, oh both famous people and non-famous people you know regular people and just everyone who gave everything for the city you know we came together as one people when we were we were at our most vulnerable and our most weak and we could have devolved into something ugly and something nasty and we could have blamed people who were who looked different than us, who believed different than us, and 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 turned on an entire segment of our population that that were just as innocent as the people in the towers on that day, and, and yet we didn't. You know, there were isolated incidents of of people being less than cordial, but it wasn't the it wasn't an overwhelming majority. No, you know, there were people that were ugly, that were nasty, but on the whole. Looking at the big picture, we came together, and we dealt with it, and we're better for it. Yes, you know, and 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 we take these moments, we take these moments for granted, watching football on a Thursday night in the comfort of our own homes. And yet, and and we could have been so much worse. It could have been as terrible as that day was, and as terrible as the events were things could have been so much more devastating you know yeah the un, you know the 3000 lives that were lost on that day could have been so many more upwards of 30,000 people could have been in the building mm-hmm. at at one o'clock in the afternoon you know it, it could have been so much more devastating you, you you know as much of a mass casualty event that it was it could have been that much more devastating you 10 20 times worse yes you know and 
Well, and and we always got to remember too that you know those are your true heroes. I know a lot of people like to talk right. about sports athletes or celebrities as their heroes. Those are your real heroes. The people that yeah. stepped up and innocently put their lives on the selflessly, the selflessly, exactly. And firefighters that died in those buildings trying to save people because that's what they do. They put that badge on. They put that helmet on every day. They don't know if they're coming back home. Right. No, I mean, no. again, if we sit here, you know, we're sitting here right now talking, watching football. You know, how about the, the 13 people that were killed in Kabul a couple of weeks ago? You know, those military yeah. people. Right. Same thing with that. They don't they didn't know they're innocent lives because of what's going on. You know, again, that's why I absolutely love our military and I love yeah. our responders. That's why at the end of every show I thank them because again, I wouldn't we wouldn't be doing this right now. If no you guys. Anyone out there watching right now, if it wasn't for you guys, we wouldn't be doing this. There's no way. No, we, we wouldn't. Right no. Now. And, wow. and we love to be able to do this Absolutely. because of your sacrifices. Absolutely. Because you guys put it all on the line for us. Every day. You know, Every and, day. and, you know, I know when, when you're in the military, you know, in the back of your head, the next step could be your last. Mm -hmm. You know, and you wouldn't. They're Marines, for God's sakes. They wouldn't rather go out any other way. Nope. I mean, you don't get to, you know, and they're, they're just, they're, they're some of the best people we've ever produced. Yep. You know, and, and the tributes to them was, was awe-inspiring. And, and, the, and, and the, you know, I, I look, I look forward to this weekend to, 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 to see our, to see our resolve and to see our people Rise up as one and say, "We will not be defeated. We will not go quietly into the night. We are, we are America, and it takes a lot more than a couple of planes to bring us to our knees." That's right. You know, we we sat in in, in shock and awe on that clear Tuesday morning. It was it was gorgeous. It was it was a beautiful Tuesday morning, and and we. No idea what was going to happen next. No. And, and you know, we have... Okay. Um, yeah. Okay, end of third. Mm. You know, as much fun as this is, and, and I, don't get me wrong, I'm having a blast. I love doing this with you guys every every Thursday. Absolutely. Um, Thank you. I, I, I wouldn't, you know, it's... it's it makes my it makes my week. It makes my week. I, I love coming on here yeah. and, and talking shop and and having a good time. But it's like being on Saturday, you know, but Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'll probably I'll probably close the show Saturday with, you know, a little bit of message on that myself now that I think about it. Because I should. And I'll probably give yeah. an opening well. Yeah. You know, I think this is the first time actually that I am actually doing a show nationally. That is, wow. Right. I mean, I did it once. You know, you know, back when I first started. You know, with, with Eric, and uh, <coughs> it was kind of emotional that day. You know, when we when we did, it. but we went into the show anyway. It right. It was not escape, but we still we still did it. How we got through it, that's another story altogether. Well, like I said, my, my current roommate, his dad lives in New York. And mm. I, I flew up there with him. I flew up there to spend a week in Queens. And, mm. I, you know, he asked me when I got off the plane Queens. where I wanted to go. He said, I want to go to Ground Zero. And he looked at me and said, why? And I'm like, I want to see it. Um, yeah. I'm Florida. We, we, I'm yeah. thousands of miles away from New York. I wanted to go there and see what it looked like. Now, by the time I got there... It was they were putting up the uh, support beams for now what is the Freedom Tower that currently stands on the right as the, as the World Trade Center at mm -hmm. one time. Um, yeah, it stands in the footprint. But I mean, I, I you know I asked him. I said, "Hey, you know, what was it like on that day?" You know, he goes, "Just just take take a moment, close your eyes, and open your ears. Just close your eyes and just just hear everything. Hear the city." Everything's moving. 
you're hearing taxi cabs, you're hearing, you know, mm -hmm. subways, you're hearing people talking, walking, whatever. He said, imagine a city like this that's so noisy, all of a sudden goes stark quiet. That's how scary it yeah. is. Yeah, deathly quiet. went quiet. Because Very everybody rare. was scared. Everybody was scared. No one knew what was going on. They didn't know what other buildings were in jeopardy. You know, the yeah. state building, right. Statue of Liberty's there. They didn't know what was going on that day, you know. And then, no. like you were talking, but about the people on Flight 192, the one that grounded the plane that was going to hit the Pentagon, you know, that was grounded by the people on that plane that they knew. Yeah. They, were, they they would rather list risk their lives to make sure that that didn't happen to the Pentagon too, you know. So I mean, you're, building. You, you're you're exactly right. Wow. You don't know how bad that could have been. Yeah. How bad that yeah. Really could have been if everything would have gone the way that uh, Al Qaeda wanted it to go. Yeah. It, yeah. You know. it could have severely, severely crippled our, our, our ability oh, to govern. Because yeah. the. Oh. That's, what That's what they wanted to do, too. I'm sorry. Not Al yeah. Excuse me. ISIS. Or one of no, them. No. Al Qaeda was right. Al Qaeda was right. Al Qaeda was okay. It's Flight 93, and, it was, and they, they suspect that it was either the White House or the Capitol building. It okay. was supposed to be the White House. Right. I've heard. I've heard both. I've heard both. Yeah. Um, the the flight path was either one. Um, the so, um, I've done a lot of. It's a subject well, that I'm very. Here's the question I have, but about that, if they knew a plane was going to hit the White House, don't you think there's some kind of defense? No. No. All the defense was aimed outward. It was Cold War. Everything was built on the. Everything was built for a, for an, an uh, over the poles attack by the Russians or an or, or overseas attack by the Russians. Everything was built to defend against the Russians. There's, there's a if you if you want a, something really chilling, um, it's on YouTube. It's a full forty three minute documentary. It's called Chaos in the Skies. Mm -hmm. They had um and in the, at the beginning and, and as this thing kicked off, um. The air traffic controllers in New York lost lost uh, flight eleven, the the first flight, the flight the, the first flight that hit the Pentagon. It was like seven. It was like seven o'clock in the morning. They lost flight eleven, and uh, I think it was like seven fifty three in the morning. They lost flight eleven, and um, the first thing they did was called was called needs or needs needs. I don't uh, the the um, air force base in. Um, they broke protocol. Protocol was they just sent it up the chain, sent it up to the FFA, they send it to the supervisor who sends it up to the chain, and then they, you know, then once they've established what's going on, then they send it to the military and, and have the military scramble jets. Well, they they broke protocol and they sent it right. To, they say we need we need military aircraft in the air right now, right now, right now, right now, and um, they were doing they were conducting exercises in, um, uh training exercises that day this is routine training exercises and they were like um is that real world or you know is this is this part of it or is it real world and uh, i was like this is real world and you know they hadn't had a hijacking in years and you know hijackings were usually they're fairly routine you know they they land the plane and they make demands to get somebody out of they want somebody released out of you know an israeli prison or they want money it's usually not a big deal. Oh, he tipped it just enough. Uh, Hell of a play. Back, I think back to oh, Die Hard. Too. Oh, no. No. Damn it, God. Whoops. Um, I think back to uh, Die Hard 2, but you talk about high plane hijacking. Yeah. Like Air Force One, stuff like that. Yeah. Like a lot of times in the seventies, there was a lot of hijacking, skyjackings in the seventies in in the Middle East. And usually, what they would do is they they'd be um, Palestinian militants would would hijack Israeli aircraft, right. and um, they would they would force the pilots to land, and they demand somebody to get out of you know they'd be they're, they're, the Israelis had so many different prisoners that they wanted released. They want four or five, maybe, you know, a couple dozen people released from prison that Israeli or the U.S. had held. And so nobody really thought too much of it. It was like, okay, well, this is interesting, you know. We'll see where this goes. And everybody in the, the um, at, at, at Needs was kind of, you know, it was, it was serious. It was, you know, 
real serious, but it was still kind of a a work a day kind of thing. You know, this is you you plan for this, you prepare for this, this is what you do. And so they're they're going through their protocols, going through their checklists, and um that's when <clears throat> Uh, about an hour later, they get the first reports on in New York that a plane's hit the first the, the first plane strike the first strike, and nobody knew what the hell was going on. Right. Um, N- New York was 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 uh, see what happened was they turned the transponders off, and so what yeah. every plane has a transponder, and it gives you the the flight data what plane it is how high it is and and where it's coming from where it's going, and that that blipped off. And so all they had was just the blip. So he, every time it goes around, it picks up a, a, a target, and they just had one blip. And they and they were they were watching New York was watching it come in, or Boston, uh, both Boston because it came out of Boston and Boston lost it, and they called New York and said, "Hey, do you have this? You know, where's Flight 11?" And um, they had there's a. Uh, we'll, we'll we'll find it. Yeah, so they started looking, and yeah. they then they got the first phone call from from the flight attendant, and they were talking to her, trying to figure out what the hell was going on. Was, All right, calm down, calm down. Explain to go, and then she tells them that one of the one of the, the number one there, the, the the lead steward, the, the lead stewardess on the on the on the flight had been had been stabbed, and there were people in the cockpit, and they they thought the plane had been hijacked, and New York was watching. And it's like and they were calling it off, four thousand, three thousand, two thousand. So next pass, it's in the ground, mm-hmm. and they they looked out, and there was just this billowing black cl- black and gray cloud of smoke in the air. And so to make a long story short, and I, I highly recommend it. I highly recommend. If you want the link, I'll send it to you. Anybody wants the link, uh, you know, just hit me up, and I'll get you the link. It's an incredible documentary. Mm-hmm. But to make a long story short, and to make my point about the fact that. Everything was designed for a, a Cold War event, a, a, a full scale Russian assault. Well, they get the after the first strike, they scramble the 15s, get or 15s, 16s, I don't remember. I think it was 16s. They scramble to fly to 16s. A pair of 15, 16s go up and they tell them to go to New York City. You, you, you scramble to New York City. Well, they went 108 miles out over the coast because that was yeah. protocol. Protocol was a. a in the event of an attack, it was going to be the Russians or the Chinese. And if it was West Coast, it was going to be the Chinese. East Coast was the Russians. And they were expecting ballistic missiles up over the poles. It was, was the general consensus on what was going to happen. And the the, the uh, Russians would roll tanks through the Kaiserine Pass, and they would, they would launch uh, attacks on the East Coast. And so they went out over – they went 108 miles out over the coast before they even realized they were in the wrong spot. Yeah, and um, and the commander at the base was like, "What the hell are those planes doing? Where in the where are where are they going?" Yeah. And they were, that's just proto. The protocol was to go out over the coast. He said, "Turn them around and head them down to New York City right now. I don't care how many damn windows you have to break." And they, they by the time they got it was all over. By the time they got to New York, and yeah. and so and and for, you know it was a peacetime event. You know you know everybody's like, well, if they had been you know. Nobody saw it coming. There was it was, it was a surprise attack. That it was so perfectly planned and so perfectly executed. Yes. That they 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 didn't. He got caught with their pants down. Yep. And 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 so you know you you to 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 make a just going back to your point about what would have been if there had been those if there were anti-aircraft batteries on top of the White House, which has been suspected and speculated, and people believe. The, the the protocol there wouldn't have been time to activate any protocol the the whole everything was to get everybody out and the only one the only person that can do that can authorize use of force by the military is the president or vice president right and the act, the shoot down order was not given until 10:35 about an hour after everything had happened right so even if they had have had anti-aircraft batteries on the White House or on the, you know, in New York or in um, in Washington uh, proper, anywhere in the D.C. area. Even if they, and the, the problem is, is if you hit a plane, right, and you turn it into, you turn it into a flying, you turn it into a missile. 
Yes. If you don't, if you don't center, if you don't square it up and and absolutely destroy it, if you if you take the wing out and it just starts spiraling, you 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 have no idea where it's gonna hit, and you're putting thousands of people on the ground in jeopardy just as much as anything. Right. There was there was it, they were damned if they did, damned if they didn't. There was a damnable situation. Right. And and you know. It was the same thing with too during Pearl Harbor. Like you were talking, about. they hit you blind. I mean, they attacked us on a Sunday. Yeah, at 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 the in the middle of the morning. Right. You know, everybody was going getting. You know, it was peacetime. We were in a peacetime footing. Um, there was you know there was chatter on the radio, just like on on nine eleven in August. In August, there was chatter that Al Qaeda was doing something. They were planning something. They were up to something. The CIA had 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 their eye on a couple of the hijackers. But they really didn't have anything to go after him on. They got the because I can never remember his name. Um, I gotta look him up real quick as we develop as we <clears throat> devolve here from our usual topics. Yes. The twentieth hijacker. Um, the suspected twentieth hijacker. Um, he claimed that he was part of it. Um. Razman bin Al Shabab. Mm. Uh, oh no, Zachary Zacharis Masawi was the was suspected as being as being one of the um was was picked up. Um, I don't know. He was arrested. He he was arrested in August of twenty of twenty uh, two thousand one. On immigration violations. And um And so he was he was suspected of being the one of the one of the 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 twentieth hijacker, but they were never able to really prove it. Right. right. And and they they believe that if he had have been that they suspect he might he was probably going to be on flight ninety three because that was the only that was the only flight with uh, four hijackers. The other the other three all had five. Okay. And it's it's be, it's believed, and, and maybe this is conjecture on my part, but it's believed believe that if he it, that because they only had four hijackers, that's why the um, the passengers on ninety three were able to overpower them and take control and eventually bring the plane down in that field in Shanksville, Pennsylvania. Yeah. Um. I know it's a rather dour subject, but it's something I find very fascinating. Yes, I, I've been fairly obsessed with it ever since it happened. Being only nine when it all went down, it was very um, impactful on my development. You know, we went from this peaceful, non, you know, you know, there had been a day, you know, um, Mogadishu in ninety, uh, ninety three, the the first trade center bombing, um, the, the attack on the coal. Those had all happened out there in the world, away from us, mm-hmm. and um. And so it was. It was easy to compartmentalize it and be like, "Well, that's just you know, they're soldiers doing their job. That's what they do. You know, that's that's why they do what they do. And and you know, and we're safe. And then you know, that's that that Tuesday morning, it all came crashing to crashing down. I could talk for hours about this. Yeah. <laughs> I'm interested to see what they're going to do at the USF game on Saturday. Yeah, me too. I mean, I'm interested to see what, what the, what the country is going to, you know, because all around the country, you know, what a catch. Yeah. For them. Brady's falling over. Look at him. 
He's falling yeah. down. He, was, he lost his footing. He still got it there. Yep. Yes. Wow. And that's why he is the GOAT. Mm -hmm. yeah. I see what you did there. That's good. I like that background. It's a good, that's appropriate. Uh, since you were talking about 9-11, I figured I'd put the USA logo up behind me. Yeah. It, 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 it's, yeah. you know, something I had to grow up with. You know, I, I know for both of you gentlemen, y'all yeah. were, you, you were well on in your adult years. I was 18. We are. Yeah. You know, it wasn't, yeah, but it, if, oh. for, for you as a, as a, you know, you were, you weren't, you weren't shaped by it, molded by it. You didn't have to live with the, you know, you were already old enough. Yeah. To where it, it wasn't as, you know, and you had, you had, you were fairly mature for, for your, you know, you were, you, you had, you had, you didn't grow up with it, you know. You didn't grow up with the ramifications of going from a peaceful country to a war con. You know, go for going right. from a peaceful footing to a war to a to a wartime footing. You know, it's something that my my generation and 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 you know myself. You know, it's it's one of the reasons why I wanted to join the military. It, it's one of the reasons why I wanted to. I wanted to be part of it. I wanted to be. I wanted to to. I didn't want to be. I didn't want that that feeling of helplessness like that set that that Tuesday morning. Right. You know, I wanted to be able to do and go and be able to Well, for me, I think the biggest <laughs> for me was a challenge disaster. Mm. Yeah, my dad, you know, my dad's, yeah, my dad's 52 too. 50, yeah. Yeah. He turned 52 this year. And he was talking, he was telling me about that years, you know, years after, you know, even years after 9 11, we were talking about, we were, I think we were talking about 9 11. It's probably right around the anniversary, probably like 06, 07, 08, somewhere in there. You know, it would have been four or five years after that. And we were talking about, you know, tragedies, things that, you know, people that grew up, people growing up with things and having that be part of your um your life you know pearl harbor the titanic disaster uh um 9 11 the challenger you know he's telling me he was in a school they were everybody was watching the challenger go because that was uh the, the the teacher was on board that year you know for that flight that was the flight that she was supposed to go is she, yeah that she went up on and um and he was like we were all in the auditorium they had they brought a tv out and they were showing it live, and, and we watched it explode on explode live on television. Ugh. Yeah. Yeah, I was coming and back. And now from Sesame Street. Uh, and you had the Oklahoma City bombing that that happened, and yeah, Colin Bine. Colin Bine. You had the, the, the you had the spaceship Columbia falling apart in space as it came back. Yeah. The atmosphere. Literally, like a year after, like like six months after nine eleven. Yeah. Because I remember it was uh, February fourth, two thousand two. It was two days before my birthday, or February first. I, I don't. It was the beginning of February. This is either the first or the fourth. I, I don't remember. Uh. Columbia. Yeah. Columbia. Yeah. Two thousand two. Broke apart. Yeah. As it was coming back. On reentry. Yeah, that was another. That was another. Well, I mean, I mean, you can think back to. I mean, it wasn't really a tragedy, but Apollo thirteen would have been a tragedy yeah. had it not been for what yeah. they did. The heroics, yeah, nonetheless. Yeah, you know, I guess what a great Paul movie. Shooting, then you had that. Then you had the whole like movie theater shooting thing. Yeah, Colorado. Then that there was a guy here that killed all those gay people. The Pulse nightclub Rando. shooting. Yeah, like, yeah, Pulse. Pulse. Yeah, yep. I'm saying. I mean, you know, and see the the one thing that I, and not so much nine eleven, but the one thing that I don't like about when you have a school shooting or a club shooting 
or whatever, the media overhypes everything, and then you think, okay, oh, yeah. the next psychopath is going to want to do more. Oh. Bumble. Yeah. Bumble, yeah. Um, but that's no, what I don't funny. understand. I don't understand. Yeah, yeah. It just it the media is hypes life. everything up. And then so the next psychopath goes, oh, that, that person killed, uh, you know, 50 people. I'm going to kill 75. Yeah. You know, you, I mean, yeah. you, know, you, still still out there. you know, yeah. I, I, don't, I don't get the media needs to not go to. I mean, if it happens, OK, you report for it for a day or two. Don't make an right. all thing. They go back every day. Oh, we're reporting. Yeah. Well, why? It, yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. yes, I know there are people that that suffer. You know, they, you know, there were 300,000 people that have died from COVID. Again, I'm not comparing COVID to a national disaster like 9-11 or Pearl oh, Harbor yeah. or you yeah. know, Oklahoma City bombing or anything like that or the Challenger blowing up. Um, but, I mean, that's what I'm saying. They, they need to stop overhyping. The media needs to stay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And they report won't. the facts and let it go. Because, it, you know what? It's been going on that way since Vietnam. It says that, forever. It all, yeah, it's it's been. Oh, like I mean, yeah. I mean, I mean, you know the old the there's the old saying: if it bleeds, it leads. Right. Exactly. Yeah. You gotta clean that up. Four turnovers. Yeah, it, it's it's a it's a good day at the office when you've had four turnovers and you still lead by two. Yeah. <sighs> yep. And you got four and a half minutes to shut it down. You're losing the turnover battle minus three, and you're still up by two points. Yeah. Go figure they've, that. They've bottled up Zeke all night. Yeah, Zeke has Zeke's only had like one or two good runs. All night got long. 10 carries for 29 yards. As we come back to the football game here that we've been watching for the last hour and not really talking about. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, we talked about it off the air last uh, last Thursday. Did you want to get together for a, 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 a kind of do this again on Sunday? If you got nothing, I got nothing going on on Sunday afternoon. If you want to, I was thinking like twelve forty-five till whenever we want to get off. All right. I have to. I'm joining Plaza, but I should be home, buddy, by twelve thirty-ish. Okay. Wait, if I you're feeling up for it, yeah. yeah. I'd love to. I'd love to watch. Like just week one is what I was thinking. Week one, hang out and kind of welcome in the new year of the NFL. Yeah, I wish we all were together the same place. Yeah, it would be fun, but. We can be together and, and apart That's with social true. distancing. Five miles. We're via satellite. Yes. Yeah, there you go. Live via satellite. Live it's, via satellite. It's Saturday, Sunday afternoon. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I can, I can hang out until, you yeah. know. Whenever yeah. you can. I was thinking it would be fun. That kind of hang out and watch the game, watch week one together, and you know talk about it and see how see how well, well our production. Uh, well, pan talk, out. take care of another take care of another um, another show. So uh. yeah, I didn't think I didn't think we'd be here all night because I got to work on Monday. Right. No, because uh, I also do uh, a, a baseball podcast on Sunday nights. Okay. Yeah, I kind of figured we'd hang out for yeah, maybe the, the the first and, um, few games, and, and if you want to. And Bradley knows who that is. Yes, I do. Yep. He's the reason why I have credentials to USF this year. Yep. Nice. Good old Ralph. And he's a big Yankee fan, too. Mm. He's a huge Yankees fan. Yeah, right. Huge Yankees fan. <laughs> now, he I'll, – I'll tell you, I'll tell you, you know, Ralph, I mean – he, you know, he's he's the one who gave me a chance. Obviously, the first to podcast here at this show. He was the one that was in charge yeah. in the beginning, and then right. still writing for the website. And he let me go off and do what I wanted to do instead of being assigned articles that I had to write, which I wasn't doing very well in. And I took a yeah. leap of faith and started writing on my own. And ever since then, he's like, Brad, you just do you do your thing, man. Guess what? It's working. Right, if you're getting views, just do what you do. Don't worry yeah. about you know, you know, so yeah, yeah, now, definitely. Now I have to write about USF now, so right, we have press 
So I'll at the game, even though I'm going and I know it, you know, it, it it's fun and all that stuff. I still have an assignment that I have to do by the end of the game. So I have right. to while I'm watching the yes. game. Well, you take your notebook, your tablet, whatever, and I have a I have a lap, I have a I have a little <laughs> laptop that I bring. With yeah, me. yeah. So I'll be yeah. I'll be writing as as the game goes and stuff like that, and. Right, taking you know, notes and keeping yeah. track of stats, and as long as I have it into him by midnight, so that he can, you know, edit it and then put it on the website on Sunday when a lot of the college football stuff goes up. Some right, of the college football stuff is actually up right away. Yeah, Usually, right. A lot of the analysts will have their notes and everything up after the game is over. So, a lot of times, what I've experienced over the last three years is. There's a lot of media members that will stay well after the game is over to get yeah. their notes and get their articles written. So mm. I usually get up and leave because I have an ability to go home. I don't live that far away. I live 20 minutes from Tampa. So I have right. the ability to come home and finish my article. But because the game is over at 430, I don't eat. I don't eat dinner that early, so I'll probably just stay and let all the traffic go away. Yeah, like, that's kind of what I was thinking. So many people there are let the traffic go, so I'll yeah. stay there and finish my article, and I'll leave maybe at five thirty, six o'clock. Mm. Box is still open at six. I'll stay in the box until they tell me to leave. You know, right? Uh, right. So, and then again, everything and now is when on my first few years. Of being a you know a press credential you know personnel we used to be able to go to the pre and post game press conferences and i never went to one because i was either a too afraid i don't know why or b i yeah. was like you know what i don't need to go and now you can't go because it's all zoom because of the COVID. so right you can't go to those things now so i can right. sit there and watch jeff scott's press conference and I can sit there and watch Dan Mullen's press conference like I did today. Hey, he was talking about that he likes these games, these Florida, the, the Florida team in state other games, other that are not Florida, Florida State, because it brings eyes to the state of Florida. But yeah. you go to the whole with Texas and Oklahoma coming into the SEC in the next few years, they're going to, you know, it may end up going to like, I don't know, 11 SEC games. Or tennis yeah. games, so you're gonna cut all these little games, right? That you have now out because yeah, you cut a, cut one of them. No yeah, free pump, huh? Yeah. When you play, you play three non-conference, or, yeah, you know, three non-conference and or four non-conference and and eight in-conference games. Yeah. So mm-hmm. if you if you go to ten conference games and two non-conference games, you get one cream puff and one, um. Resume oh. pattern. Well, I was gonna say with with Ford, it'll be Florida State. That's right. Conference games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then and then they'll have a tune up game. Yeah. Week one they'll play like Mercer or, you know. FAU or something like that. Uh, Bishop yeah. Sycamore. <laughs> Funny thing is, they played against the IMG Academy, which is here in Florida. The team that they yeah. played against, that, that team that played yeah. here in Florida. IMG didn't did they go? They went up to IMG went up to Ohio to play them, didn't they? Yeah, I think they did travel. It was a travel game. Yeah. Yep. I was watching. I think it was it urinating trees video yes. about them. Yes. Yeah. He did a video, and, and he was talking. He was he was <laughs> criticizing. He was criticizing IMG for just kind of Joe. Well, we're just gonna go play. Whatever. He uh, uh-huh. he said that all three of them need to need to go to jail. Yeah, yeah. Shit they really were. And they They're go- horrible people. Yeah. They are. If, 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 the, if, if half the allegations are true, they yeah. are terrible people. Promising those kids that they're going to make it to a Division One, A D1, college. yeah. Yeah. And half of them half of them are in their early 20s. Yeah. Yep. And, and you know, I feel for them. You know, I feel for the, for the, the young men that were duped. They don't know any better. They're young guys. You know, they're 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 they 18, 19, 20. They grew up in rough neighborhoods, had rough lives. You know, they weren't high school stars. They didn't have a chance to get out. And here yeah. comes here comes these these con men, and then these hucksters, and they 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 serve them a big pile of bullshit. Yep. 
and they make promises that they can't um they can't fulfill they can't deliver I mean promises that they can't deliver on and um and these guys they, you look like suckers yep mm-hmm. huge third down third biggest third down, down of the game well, got it Liam. Yeah. I should just about do it, eh? All they got to do is get yep. in field goal range. Yep. You're only down two. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Is my co-host going to be ticked off on Saturday if this comes true? Ah. I hate to say, I said, Steve, I don't want to be a single one. I told you so. Speaking of that, Lou, how is Bet doing? Well, um, she still has the only cancer, but um, yeah. we did find that we did find out that um, it, at least it is not leukemia. There was reports mm-hmm. that she might have had that, but thankfully that is not the case now. So, uh, Betty, so um, Betty is holding her own. I mean, I owe a great deal to Betty because Betty is the one that discovered me five yeah. and a half years ago. Mm. I'm like, you know, I mean, I didn't know what to think at first when, you know, I, my, when I first came up on my Facebook and, like, you know, it said one mutual friend, and it was actually uh, Eric. I'm like, okay, let me let me investigate this because this was the first one we ever I ever got, like, the mutual friend stuff. So I went to check it out, and then it said, talk to me, sports, real. Like, okay, let me check this out. So the, uh, the day after um, I was visiting uh, friends, I checked this out to see what's was like, Hmm, this sounds interesting. This is legit. I'll, so I got in touch with Betty. Like, okay, all right. Um, I'll I'll give I'll give it a shot here. I guess this is my 15 minutes of fame. I can I can do great. Or I can make an ass of myself, which I thought was going to happen anyway. Uh, you guys know from experience. <laughs> so yeah. Any, any, so uh, March of 2016, I'm like, okay, what have I got to lose except my self respect dignity, nerve, pride, nothing serious. So, right, I gave it a shot, and you know, I made the call, which I always going to be doing like a few minutes. So I'm like, okay, that's it, goodbye. But um, right. I stayed out for the for the whole show, and uh, you know, they, they said, uh, you know, maybe uh, you know, you, you know your stuff. Uh, you want to stay out as a regular? Go right ahead. Like, great. And since then, you know, it's it's been there's been a few bumps in the road, um, you know, occasionally from my own mistakes, which I phone up to, and you know, but ever since then, and then when I'm, and then uh, in early 2018, uh, I was asked to fill in while Betty was recovering from her uh, one of her surgeries, and then you know, and, and Kevin uh, Dixon like, do you want to fill in? I'm like, okay, sure. And then when Betty came back. Uh, she was doing uh, doing another show. I'm like, um, so you're gonna do two shows? No, the job is yours. I'm like, oh yeah. And I, you know, and for the last now almost four years, you know, I've been hosting the show, and you know, I owe Betty and Kevin a great deal. And you know, Betty's been like, you know, like an older sister to me. And you know, it's you know through her guidance and whatnot. You know, I never would have got this far uh, without her. Mm. We've even hosted a few shows together, and you know that worked. That worked out. For, that worked out pretty well. It's it paid the it paid the way. I mean, Eric do you know they only paved the way to get where I am now, doing you know my my show, uh, this with you guys, which is a riot. Oh, that's and, uh, right. And uh, Taylor Phillips on Saturdays, you know we have we have that. So you know. It's like it's become a career for me, and uh, but it's been something I've always wanted to do. I didn't think it was going to be like in this uh, form, but you know, hey, whatever you can get it, you can get right. it. Because I, I, I I've always heard for a radio and a television because you know there's one thing that radio has an advantage to over television. If you make an ass of yourself, nobody can see what you're doing. No, can see your face at least. Um, I never thought I, I would. I'll second that sentiment. It's something I've always wanted to do. I mean, 
you know, ever since, you know, ever since growing up on listening to Mike and Mike and, and, and Colin Cowherd and, and, and the uh, rest of them on, um, Yeah. yeah. You had to mention Cowherd, though. Ugh. I know. I know. I mean, well, when he first started on radio, I really liked him. When he was just a radio guy, right. I really, you know, he was 20 no years ago. Yeah. Yeah. He, he, he before, before his own shit didn't stink. Right. And, and you know, I liked Colin Cowherd originally. You know. Right. And they, they was- were the... They were the ones that, you know, Mike and Mike, Colin Cowherd, um, ESPN 1000 out of Chicago. I listened to a lot of them late nights. Um, listened to them a lot on late night, you know, late nights after 8 o'clock when the, when the signal shifted. I could pick up AM 1000 out of Chicago. Good eye. So I listened to, listened to them a lot. And, and, you know, and just, you know, the, the local guys in Detroit, you know, and then there's a, um, Carson Anderson, um, Right, and Pat Caputo. If you've never read any of his stuff, he's a great writer. Really, I I, really I, like him. I've gotten really, a few really like, I'm like you because I like you know when the signal came in strong and I, I used to get some of these from Detroit and uh, yeah, actually uh, Edmonton, Canada. I, when I was um, mm, yeah, so, yeah, so, yeah, Oilers games, like I'm actually listening to uh, to an Oilers game on my AM radio and, and it's the right, right. Like, ah, this is the guy that I'm mentioning for for a while, Wayne Gretzky. Oh, okay, I guess I gotta, I gotta hear this. I I yeah. used to listen to um the Hamilton Bulldogs, the, the AHL team or OHL. Right. I think they're actually OHL out of out of Ontario, Hamilton, right? I think Ontario. I think they, I think they're in Ontario. Yeah. Used to be able to pick up their games every now and again, mm-hmm. scrolling through the AM radio dial because we didn't. Growing up, I didn't have cable. I thought it was like in the Twilight Zone when I was. I know, right? When I found this. Uh, what's going on here? I'm picking a station from Canada. I live in New Jersey. How the hell is this yeah. possible? Right. I used to listen to uh, a lot of this show. It used to be on Sunday afternoons after the Tigers games. It was uh, Talking Baseball. And I really liked listening. They were they they were great back in the day. That should do it. That's right. And look at them now. Blah. Sorry. Mm-hmm. You know, and anyway, just when you thought, too, that you know, the Tigers were making something this year, or early in the yeah. year, we had the no hair yeah. thing. Maybe they got some this year, but then I, I like where we're at. I like where what? we're at overall. Yeah, I'm getting younger next season. Hopefully, picking up a couple of big name free agents. Hinch is doing a great job managing what he has. AJ uh, Hinch with yeah, AJ Hinch. Yeah, they're here in Tampa. With, but- and and I'll be the first one to say I was a very I was very vocal in my displeasure of them bringing him on board. Um, oh, you're gonna take the field goal down with you nuts. Fourth and six. Up? I know, right? What's time up on the clock, stupid? You have Brady a chance. Ah, not a good move. But and if it's bad. good, it, this it is it's good. a 48 yard field goal. Yeah, yes. But the bad news is you still Damn get it. almost over a minute and a half to get in. Well, under a minute and a half now. Yeah. Now the Bucks, all the Bucks have to do is get a field goal too. Not, not. Yep. Yeah. Um. Any, any, any. What's my, who's it? You know. And so I'd, I'd, I'd always aspired to be, to be a radio guy or do some kind of commentary. I, I tried yeah. in the in the early, early two thousand tens. I did some political commentary. Never really went anywhere. I um, mm. had maybe a thousand views overall. I did probably 25 videos and it I never really could find a format that fit and I'm not good on my own I I, I did the banter between the three of us just works so much better that's kind of why I I I don't do the Saturday show because if I can't have one or both of y'all on right it's just not as much fun I don't I don't have that ability to go back and what's that it's difficult really doing on your own because you know it really is it really is I mean every now and again I can put on a good show but I can't consistently bring it every week and so it's just not something that I want to do, you know. It's just you know, when I first started, I was a wreck. Yeah, it's just was it's a, not. A it, it's a lot of um and I uh, and let me see what are we going to talk about next is is, is what I have, yeah. and it's just it's not a it's not a good product. It's not something that no. I'm proud of, and so I I really kind of moved away from that. I may pick it. I may try it again here again this week. I don't know. It's kind of one of those things where if I don't want to do it, I'm not going to do it. Yeah, and if I do want to do it, then I'm going to do it. 
when I first started, I was a complete wreck. I was, you know, filling in for filling in for betting, and like I was just like a nervous wreck. I didn't know what buttons to press. I'm like, what am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? Like, yeah, yeah. This for short time. I'm like, help me, help me. Oh boy. Right, right. I mean, I thought he was gonna get a trank. I needed a tranquilizer or, or something. Ugh. Luckily, the show went, I got some help before the show went on. Ugh. But now I've gotten the hang of it, and you know it's yeah. you know, half years later, and you know I'm more at ease now. The Saturday show is a has really gone well. Uh, right. Hopefully, hopefully, one or both of you guys can come on. And, you know, we got a lot to talk about on the on on this Saturday show. This might be my busiest yeah. show of the year. So, Probably. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's a one, it, one of them. Yeah. Because you know we're gonna we're gonna tackle, of course, baseball, college, and pro football. But we're also going to do some stuff that I normally don't talk about. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, uh, the cockroach yeah, racing. <laughs> right, right. The, the, uh... No, no. Uh, you know, like um, uh, the U.S. Open finals are this weekend. Uh, men's, uh, women's Saturdays, men's Sunday. Uh, there is a boxing match with the mm. uh, real deal this weekend. Mm. So, although at his age, I don't know if he should be fighting or not. Right. Yeah. So, um, um, the tour championship. So, this is going to be a very interesting show uh, this weekend. Uh, I like to get as many calls as, as possibly can, and of course, a little um, 9/11 um, reference. Yeah. Some. some... <sighs> I did not expect to spend like forty-five minutes on that. So. No, no, it's really fine. I mean, I mean, this is a. You know, um, a monumental, An important uh, milestone. Yeah, you know, got it. So, but I won't, I won't dwell into that too much because you know, it's, yeah, you know, not my show. Since I only got two hours anyway, and you know, want to get right. And, and one of the reasons why it was easier to do it tonight is because we ended up, we decided to stay late tonight. Yeah, and we got another flag. We oh, false start we, offense. It's one thing that. There hasn't been a lack of the refs being flag happy. Yeah, a lot of as expected. It's supposed to be as to be expected in week one. Well, yeah, especially week one. Well, do you take the runoff or? Uh no, they called a timeout to avoid the. That's right. Yeah, second runoff. I think you should do that if you're out of reach. Yeah. If the game's out of reach, then I take the runoff. But when you're in striking distance, um, only down by one, you don't take the runoff. Now you can't really throw it in the middle of the field, though. Yeah. Yeah. Run out of bounds. You have to run out of bounds. Screw ball. Uh, how far are they from field goal range? 25, 30 yards. 30 yards, okay. Second and nine. I probably need the 34. Yeah, okay. I'm not sure who's kicking you in New England. You need about a good or, 30 yards, I think. Ryan Suckup. Oh. oh dear. Suckup's a pretty good kicker. Kowski's in the middle of the field. Yeah. That's okay because you still got 40 seconds on the clock. So you can take uh, – You can spike it here. Spike it and you need about 10 or 15 yards. Or do you just pop up and throw it real quick? I was going to say or throw a touchdown, right? Nobody home either on that one. That was a – that was one of those ones. If somebody's wide open, you throw it to them. If they're not, throw it away. Yeah. And he threw that away. So now you still need about... Mm, 15 yards to be comfortable? Yeah, somewhere around 15 to 20 yards. I, I like I like Tom's reaction there. No. Like, no. 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 We're not running that play. Yeah, yeah. Why don't you call no. That play, damn it. Yeah. We're not running that play. Yep. No, no. No. Oh, it's Godwin! Oh, got it. Did he score? Nah, out of bounds. 
I don't know. They're getting, no, they're, getting they're getting closer. And closer. They're getting closer and closer. That's that's goal. that's field goal range. That's the twenty. That's field goal range. That's well within the range. Victory. Twenty and seven and three is thirty. I hate to do this. What is but. it? What is? It? How many yards do they go back? Where the holder uh, is five, seven. It's yards seven back? yards. It's seven yards seven on the field. Back. It's seven yards. And the uh the upright is uh three yards. Right. Okay. That should have been a push off. The flag for an offensive pass interference. Yeah, that was pi. Oops. That was a push. They didn't call it, so it counts. But that was pi. I, I if that had happened, if the Dallas clear, yeah, that was throw it away, play for another yeah, down. But yes, he's got his hand on his jersey though too. Did he? Mm-hmm. And you could just call it incidental contact. Both were. Playing for the ball. Oh, go ahead. Not going to take the field goal yet? What are you waiting for? Well, it's only second down. You've got 14 seconds, seconds left. Oh, yeah, I guess they're going to try and see if they can try to one more, one, one more, one or two more plays here. You, and kick, here. you, want, to, you want to get as many, as many. Oops. Get as many yards as you can. Yeah. 9 out of 10 seconds. Yeah, it's kind of it, – it's, it's just anything anything to the sideline. Don't do anything stupid. You're well within field goal range. Do you kick it now? You kick it on third down with that 10 seconds well, left? That's not unusual. 10 seconds and third down, game on the line, that's not unusual well, the at all. You, you, the only reason that you kick it on third down is you have another down afterwards. But you don't have enough time to clock it. No. No. Well, what you could do is if it's a bad snap, you jump up and throw it away. Yeah. yeah. Okay, seven seconds. That was it. Okay. Yeah, I was. I, they called two straight plays where Tom throws the ball out of bounds. Ice the kicker. Come on, ice the kicker. Yeah, I kind of think that that was literally. If there was not, you know, it, it he had to be wide open, wide yeah, open, say, yeah. uncovered. I say. Yeah, I was gonna say. Oh, too easy. Exactly it, it, if the defense fell asleep and let somebody go, then yeah. Other okay. than that, throw it away. I'm going to be sick. Guarantee you McCarthy calls a timeout. Yeah, absolutely. Do it. You need to call it right as right. soon as he gets right, as soon as he, the middle, right about it. now. Got it. Suck up. Got it. Did they call a timeout? No. No. They didn't call a timeout. Told you. Too much time. They, had, they gave him too much time. It's good. Two seconds left. You kick it at some bitch right out of the back of the end zone. Yep, you sure do. Only don't even give him a chance. You make him, give him, kick it out of the back of the end zone and make him make a play on on make him make a play from scrimmage. Don't give him a chance to set up a return. Tom, effing Brady. We need a Chris Simmons of uh, Auburn Lewis, play for this. Lewis, Lewis called that. You gave him a minute and twenty seconds. I mean, yeah. Too much time. Yeah, too much time. Yeah, no, I was uh, I was right there. I was right there with Lewis. <laughs> too much that's time. why you take those two timeouts. <laughs> and they have two timeouts. Well that's well, that. that's why that's why Tampa Bay that's why Tampa Bay took they takes the two timeouts on, on on defense. Yeah. To save the clock. Yep. Dak has actually played a really good game. Dak played a really, great. really good game. Yeah, he did. He played an he played he played a oh, hell of a ball game. Sure. And Dallas Dallas has a if Dallas continues to play this well, they, the they just happen to run into one of the greatest of all time. Unless you get a miracle here, which to me and, 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 and to me, you kick it out of the back of the end zone and you make them put the ball in play at the 25 yard line. You, you make them you, you right. make them make an yeah. offensive play. Yep. don't squib it. Don't no, I didn't kick that out of the back of the end zone. They play a chance for a lateral. Yeah. Don't give them any chances for a lateral. You make them make a lateral play on the field. Make Dak, them have- Dak, 42 of 58 for 403 yards, three touchdowns, and a pick. Not Brady, bad. 32 of 50, 380 yards, four touchdowns, and two picks. Wow. Yeah, but what, neither, one of those, neither one of those Brady picks were his fault. Nope. No, no, no. One went off his hand. One went off the guy's hands. All and right. The, we got a miracle here. The other one. 
Dak isn't even in the game. He's exhausted. What? Why isn't Dak in the game? Who the hell do they have running the offense? Oh, they just caught a timeout. A That's timeout. why Dak's not out there. Dallas says Dallas played a hell of a ball game. They gave him way more of a game than I thought they would. I agree with uh, that. Do you think that? Okay, how much do you think it was that um, once his nuts got hurt in the first in the first series? Mur- Sean Murphy Bunning a lot. Yeah. Do you think that? Do you think that? Yeah. Do you think Murphy Bunting makes that much of a difference in this game? Defensively, yeah, because Jamal Dean is not the same kind of player. Look how many times you had or, or you had. Yeah. Lateral. Yeah. See, Dak isn't in the game. Why the hell isn't Dak in the game? Because they're doing the wildcat stuff, and that was. But yeah, you know, chance anyway. I think I said he was down. The Bucks win. He didn't even get a chance to pitchy pitchy woo woo. No, he. No. What a ball game, gentlemen! Yes, what a was. game! That was worth staying. That was worth staying up late for. Oh sure. Uh, I'm, I, I'm telling you right now. I think we're all still awake compared to the draft where we were. Yeah. All <laughs> I'm still there. I'm still there. Yeah, the first I, round. Yeah, I didn't even. Round. I didn't even fall asleep tonight. <laughs> we, no. Yeah, Adam was sleeping in the middle of the show last time we did this. We That's were right. This like, yeah. It got it got late. The draft dragged on. Yeah. Well, it and does. On they, and on and on. They go to too many damn commercials, and they it's yeah. just too. They take ten. They, you get ten minutes. You take ten minutes on the clock, and they take ninety nine minutes and fifty nine seconds. The pick. Yeah. I mean, we've been sitting here on, on draft for for. Four months since the end of the college season. Mm-hmm. Every team knows exactly who they're taking in the first round. There's yep. 31, 32 yeah. teams. They have six guys that they're, they're targeting. Right. If the first five guys are off the board, okay, we'll take this guy. You know, the, the first 10, the, at least the first five teams have their guys already. Right. Mostly. The first, the first two teams, you know, definitely have their guys. Three has probably got... Okay, if they if one and if these two guys go one and two, then we'll take the guy three, four, five and six. They're they're targeting guys. Then once you get so then once you get to the back half of the draft, you know you get to twenty twenty through thirty two. They know who's probably going to be available at the end of the draft. Right. Ah. Still. Yeah. Well, gentlemen, I bid you a fair good night. Thank you, guys. Thank- Everyone out there, again, we want to thank our uh, the men and women of our armed services, our first responders. Thank you guys for doing what you do. I will see you, gentlemen, on Sunday. Hell yeah, I'll well, be here. Right. All right, like twelve forty. I was thinking like twelve forty-five. Gonna a little bit of pregame. Be in the link. Then... I'll be there. All right, absolutely. See you guys, Sounds guys. good to me. Yep. All right. All right. Take care. Take that chance. Uh, try and call the Ant Sports Show at Saturday, five to seven p.m. East Coast time. The number to call is five one two five four three four. Six six two. Don't forget, you can also look me up my um, email account at lutsnor45 at capitalgmail.com. Remember, capitalize a G or you don't get squat. Believe me, you won't get squat. You don't. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll be back, guys, again uh, on the show next Thursday talking, recapping yeah. of the NFL week two of the college football season. Yeah. And now, I'm going to rip my hair out of my head for this loss of a game. Good night. Right. <laughs> Special show um, Sunday. Yeah, one, go vomit afterward. Yeah. One, one, one more thing before we close. I just want to wish my mom well as we lay my grandma to rest tomorrow afternoon. Uh, just keep her in your thoughts and prayers. Uh, uh, she was 72, and, and she's been declining for a while. I think I told you about that. Yeah, I talked to you about yeah. that last week. Yep, she had sure. been – she had, she was uh, – um, in poor health, and so – and and she's in a better place now, and – we're going to say our, our final goodbyes tomorrow afternoon. Um, and so uh, thank you for having me on the show. It's been fun. Yep. Thanks for letting me stay up late with you watching this hell of a ball game. It was a good ball game. Yeah, it was. Yeah. It was it, this is a lot worth staying up for compared to the trap. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Drug on forever. Right. Um, but I see, like I said, but I will see you. Uh, Sunday afternoon at some Sunday point. Sunday afternoon, yeah. I'm going to go donate plasma yeah. and then I'll be home. I should be home around 1230, 1245. So. Okay. Yeah, that's kind of what I was, th- I was thinking as we just pop on at like 12.45, do like 15 minutes pregame, uh, and then just get into the games. 
Yeah, because you guys might get different games than I do. Well, I'm gonna have access. I should have a free preview of Sunday ticket, so okay. I should have all the games. Well, that's kind of why I wanted to do week one. Is I'm gonna have uh, I should have a free preview of Sunday ticket this weekend, and so that's kind of what I was thinking. Week one would be a fun week to do. All right, but well, I'm gonna get off here because I gotta okay go to sleep. But I will see you on Sunday, my man. I'll be here on Sunday. Right, Take it easy. Yep, you too.